A pleasant good evening and welcome to Moon Stadium on the campus of Moon High School in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky and Fred Guy on the call for you for this WPIAL 5A Allegheny 9 conference matchup between the Woodland Hills Wolverines and the Moon Tigers. Woodland Hills is 6-1 on the season, 5-0 in Allegheny 9 play. Meanwhile, the Moon Tigers are 2-4 on the year and 2-3 within the conference. The Wolverines come off of a 15-8 victory at North Hills in a very exciting game a week ago. Meanwhile, the Tigers got a conference win as well, a 22-15 victory against Char Valley. Good to have you along with us all across the Woodland Hills Football Network as we have crossed Allegheny County, going from the eastern suburbs to the western side of the county for this big conference matchup. And Fred, first time we've ever seen the Moon Tigers as the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Yeah, and as I was watching them warm up, they look pretty impressive in terms of their size and speed. So, you know, for Woodland Hills defensively today, they really need to contain the outsides. And do not let these Tigers get around the edge and pick up some, some good yards. And, and, they, and offensively, they keep, really need to just keep doing what they've been doing. I mean, uh, mixing in the pass and the run, um, maybe getting Jawan Hill the ball a little bit more and see what he can do. And, uh, Hopefully you can light up the scoreboard. Now, talking to Coach Novak earlier in the week, Jawan Hill sustained an injury in the game against North Hills. His status for today was unknown when we recorded the pregame show. Hopefully he will be available. If not, the weight will be distributed amongst Seed Holt as well as Jaquan Smith, and we may see Rodney Denard get some carries as well. Yeah, considering you know Rodney toted the ball a lot last year, uh, typically in some uh, reserve roles, but you know he's no stranger to the end zone or carrying the ball. A little bit of a late start here at Moon Stadium. A lot of that has to do with the fact it's senior night. They were honoring the Moon Township Tiger seniors uh, down along the near sideline as the Woodland Hills Wolverines take the field as they will take the far boundary wearing their road white jerseys, black pants, turquoise numerals with the black trim, and the turquoise helmets with the black ears and stripes. Near sideline are the Moon Tigers. They wear their home red uniforms, red jerseys, red pants, white numerals with the black trim, white helmets with the Tiger, or rather with an M on both sides, nearly set to get this one kicked off. And Fred, let's take a look back to a week ago where Woodland Hills really, really did a terrific job uh, overcoming some adversity for the first time in a long time. We haven't seen Woodland Hills face the kind of adversity and overcome it like they did a week ago at North Hills. Yeah, I mean, the only time they really have been down in the season was against Penn Trafford. And, um, you know, they went up early and Penn Trafford made a comeback, did a great job, but they really haven't seen uh, a deficit like that since the, uh, up until the North Hills game being down seven, or I'm sorry, eight nothing. Uh, at one point and uh, they just did a great job of really coming together as a team not letting the scoreboard dictate what they were going to do on the field and overcame with a nice victory. In addition to that Fred a week ago Woodland Hills qualified for the playoffs for the 21st consecutive season so a milestone there but this game has uh, impl uh, implications as well for the playoffs especially for Woodland Hills they win this week it gets them one step closer to a conference championship. Yeah it does it, it, especially with you know the, it's, it's hard to dictate how things are going to play out you know we'd like to see Woodland Hills run the table and, and win the section but you know other than you know including these Moon Tigers they do have a really tough schedule uh, along the way but you know anything could happen again Woodland Hills and Moon right here on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network moments away from kickoff in this Allegheny 9 conference matchup Woodland Hills is 6-1, undefeated in conference play. Meanwhile, Moon 2-4 and four on the year. As I said earlier, 2-3 and three within the conference. So, honestly, Fred, playoffs not out of the realm of possibility yet for Moon either. No, I mean, either it's not out of the possibility for Moon, North Hills, um, even Shar Valley still has a chance if, if they can, you know, run the table in these last uh, three games. Taking a look at the Woodland Hills schedule, we talked about it next week. West Allegheny comes to the Wolverine in a game that could decide at least a portion of the Allegheny 9 Conference Championship. And then Upper St. Clair wraps up the season at uh, the Wolverine on October 28th. And as always, we will have the coverage for you right here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Wolverines will be kicking off from left to right across your computer screen or television screen for this uh, beginning of this football game. Chucky Hanchett is the kicker for Woody High and back deep to return for the Moon Tigers is Anthony Panucci. 
Hancha drops his hand, and we are underway in Moon Township, PA. Ball to the near numbers will be returned by an up man for Moon, and he will cross the 30 and then be brought down by a pair of Wolverines. Summers and uh, Smith in on the tackle for the Wolverines there after the return man was brought down. Crossing the 20 on that return, Josh Burns. The Tigers will go straight from the sideline to the line of scrimmage. And will set in the shotgun. First and 10 at the 31 for Moon. Just a few seconds elapsed in this football game. Motion man from right to left, bringing receivers two to either side. Throw to the right-hand side, and the pass is complete. Sliding down and making that reception for the Tigers is Nick Sebastian. And Sebastian on the reception, picking up about six, and it's second down and four for Moon. And Moon doing a great job of really coming out with the pass on the first play, something that Willard Hills really isn't uh, accustomed to, uh, considering they're so stout against the, the run they have been so far in the season. Pistol formation this time to receivers to either side. And the ball comes loose off of the handoff. The Wolverines were in there. A pile up for the football, and let's see who comes out at the bottom of the pile with the rock. Woodland Hill says they have it. And the officials will say that the Tigers fall on top of it after the fumble. And typically, this is something we don't see. The running back in a pistol formation in a three-point stance. It's probably the first time I think I've ever seen that uh, happen since I started broadcasting. But uh, number 19 for Willen Hills, uh, Deontay Robinson came up and put a nice hit on the running back, causing that fumble. No gain on the play. The ball carrier was Brady Sunday. And now Moon is in the shotgun. Quarterback running to the left-hand side, dumps it off in the flat. The pass is complete, and the tight end wrestled out of bounds, but he will pick up the first down for the Moon Tigers on the reception is Nick Bonner. And this was just a quick five-yard out by Bonner into the flats, which was wide open, cleared out by the wide receivers, and took the, the cornerback and set, uh, safety with him, and he just did a great job of picking the first down. Gain of 10 on that play, and it is. First and 10 for the Tigers, and the pass across the middle and nearly intercepted by Deontay Robertson. The pass intended again for Bonner, but this time he couldn't come down with it. Yeah, we're so used to calling Deontay Robinson's name on the offensive side of the ball. Um, right now, he's really doing a great job of ball hawking. He's been in on a forced fumble and a potential interception, and usually he's pretty short-handed on the receiving side. So it's second down and 10 for the Tigers. Ball on the left hash, trips to the right-hand side, run receiver to the near side, left side card to the left-hand side of the QB. He'll look to the left, throws to the left, the pass is complete. It's enough for a Tigers first down. As the completion goes to Josh Burns, Burns picks up about 13, and it is first and 10 for the Tigers at the Woodland Hills 40. And it looks like Burns just ran a little five out, five yard out, caught the ball, and uh, I think Woodland Hills is giving them, giving these receivers a little bit too much cushion right now. So Kanichka in the shotgun. He'll hand off this time, and the ball carrier straight up the gut is Brady Sunday, and Sunday will drive his way forward for a pickup of five before being dumped down by the Wolverines, and it is second and five. And there was really nothing fancy about that play. Sunday just took the ball from the quarterback and ran right up the field. The offensive line did a great job of pushing uh, basically the, the front seven five yards back. So Kanichka in the pistol. Sunday behind him, two receivers right, one receiver to the near side, left tight end to the right of the formation as well. Low snap, handoff, Sunday, and he will be 
driven back and brought down. Loss of about one on the play. Tackle made by John Robinson. And Fred, a week ago, Robinson was shaken up pretty severely for Woodland Hills, but good to see him back in the lineup. Yeah, and good thing that he was because he did a great job of really shedding the guard for Moon. Actually, one over, right over top of the center uh, with a swim move and was able to get Brady, or I'm sorry, Sunday, Brady Sunday in the backfield for a loss. Three receivers to the right. Can each get back to pass? He's pressured as he rolls to the right hand side. Pumps twice. McAllister can't get there. Kanichka picks up the first down as he cuts it back inside of the 30, and he will be brought down at the, or inside of the 20, rather, and brought down at the 16-yard line. A huge run for the Tigers, picking up 20 yards. Kanichka did a great job of really using his speed. A lot of pressure on the left side of the Wolverine defense, but uh, Kanichka was able to make a couple of people miss and then outrun Mike McAllister to the edge, and then once he uh, got to that right side, he was able to pick up some good yards, including the first down. This moon drive starting at the 31-yard line, and they are already inside of the Woodland Hills red zone. Two receivers to either side as the ball's on the right hash. Can each go by himself for the wing to the left as well. He'll look to the left, throwing to the left. The pass is complete on the reception. Josh Burns, he'll be wrestled down after a modest gain of about three or four on the tackle for Woodland Hills, Nazir Taylor. And Moon's done a really good job of, of running the mixture of their offense kind of to perfection. I mean, they really, as far as I know, has only had one incomplete pass so far in this in this ball game and on this drive. And if you can keep the Woodland Hills offense on the bench, it's, you're doing a pretty good job so far. Trips to the right, two receivers to the left-hand side. Wing moved early as Kanichka back to pass. No whistle blows. He will dump it off around the 10-yard line. Robertson making the tackle as Panucci on the catch there for the Moon Tigers. I'm trying to see if Deontay Robinson, where he's playing at in terms of the defense, because he's doing a great job of, of really just flying all over the place so far in this ballgame. Pick up about two there on that completed pass. Ganeshka rolling to the left. He will throw to the left. He has a receiver open, but uh, that tight end bobbles the football, and Nick Bonner cannot pull it in. And the ball will fall to the turf incomplete. A Wolverine had an opportunity to come out of there with it as well. I think that Wolverine was Avram Abramovitz. He was unable to, and it's fortunate for the Moon that he was not because there was nobody in front of Abramovitz, even if he had that, uh, was able to come up with that interception. He probably would have been in the end zone in a couple minutes, a couple seconds, sorry. So the field goal unit is out for the Moon Tigers. This will be a 27-yard field goal attempt from the right hash. And the kick is up, and... It is good, just getting inside of the right upright, and with 6.54 to play in the first frame, it's the Moon Tigers 3 and the Wolverines 0. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Back at Moon Stadium where Woodland Hills trails the Moon Tigers 3 to nothing. Uh, uh, Michael Bates, I believe, the kicker. Uh, field goal covering... 17 yards, and the Wolverines down early. And over end kick will be returned by Derek Carraway from the 15 as he runs from left to right. He'll cross the 30, retreating, and then stepping out of bounds around the 35-yard line. And it will be first and 10 for the Wolverines right around there as the tackle was made by Nick Bonner. And for the second week in a row, we see these Woodland Hills Wolverines uh, in a little bit of a deficit. Last week it was 2-0. This week is 3 nothing in the first uh, drive of the game, so let's just hope they can, uh, you know, reverse this situation and uh, get some points on the board themselves. Again, 3 to nothing. Moon leading Woodland Hills. And as the Wolverines will start this drive at their own 34 with 6.47 to play in the first frame. Pistol formation, Whitehurst getting the start at QB again. The Wolverines running to the left. It's Rodney Denard getting the start at tailback. He'll bounce off of Moon Tigers, cutting it back to the near side, right 50, to the 40, to the 30, 
the 20, 15, 10, 5, end zone touchdown, and Rodney Denard starts things off well for the White and Turquoise. Well, the lead for the Moon Tigers didn't last very long. One play, and I'm looking to see if there's any flags on the field. Nope, we're good. So the touchdown's going to stand, and Rodney Denard did a great job really taking the ball uh, from his right to his left. Saw that there was nothing going once he crossed the line of scrimmage and saw a cutback lane. And then once he saw that cutback lane, he was off to the races. Chucky Hanson on to give Woodland Hills a four-point advantage. Right now, three-point lead for Woody High. McAllister through the snapper. Whitehurst is the holder, and the kick splits the uprights. And Woodland Hills leads Moon 7-3 with 6.35 to play. In the first quarter, you're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Back at Moon Stadium where Woodland Hills has opened up a four-point lead on the Moon Tigers. Just one offensive play thus far for Woody Hine. That was a 66-yard touchdown run for Rodney Denard as he just absolutely caromed off of the first wave of Tiger tacklers. And after that, it was number nine off to the house. Yeah, and we did a great job of breaking uh, body tackles and some arm tackles. And then, you know, you put Rodney Denard in an open field, he's going to find the end zone pretty fast. Hanchett slips the kickoff will bounce to the 25-yard line where the Tigers will be on the return. Josh Burns on the return for Moon, and he will cross the 35 to about the 36, where Alvin Abramovitz makes the tackle, and it will be first down and 10 for Woody High. So the one thing, that rather Moon, Moon, sorry. One thing Moon Tigers have to do is really control the tempo of this game, really drive it down, because obviously you see you put the ball in the hands of the Wolverine offense one play, and they're in the end zone. You know, Moon can certainly combat that if, if they play ball control offense. Nick Morrow, incidentally, was the kicker on the field goal for the Moon Tigers, and very non-traditional number of 72 for the six-foot, 222-pound junior kicker, which is also unconventional. Cole Kanichka, the quarterback, wing to his right, and the tailback to the right-hand side will take the handoff, and he will be wrapped and brought down in the backfield. The tailback is Brady Sunday, the tackle made by John Robinson. John Robinson so far in this ball game is having, uh, he's doing a great job of really getting around the center for the Moon Tigers and then second tackle in the backfield for a loss. Second and 12 for Moon. The ball at their own 34 yard line, right to left go the Tigers from our vantage point. Trips to the right, one receiver to the short side left. Kanichka dropping back, setting up the screen as he dumps it off. The pass complete to Brady Sunday, and he will be brought down about a yard deep in the backfield on the tackle for Woodland Hills, she Page Jones. Great job of Page Jones uh, being alert. Uh, watched he, what he did was he watched the linemen, saw that they, he was letting, or they were letting the defensive line in pretty easily, sought out the receiver on the screen pass, and just made a nice tackle. Loss of one on the play, and it is third down and 13 for Moon. The ball moved to the right hash now as the Tigers continue to head right to left. Clock winding with 5-12 to play in the first quarter. Two receivers put to either side and a wing to the left-hand side of the formation as well. And there was movement uh, by the Moon Tigers. A couple of receivers moved early. We will check in with our official. So a false start against the Tigers will move them back five more yards. That'll bring up third down and 18 for Moon as the ball all the way back to their own 28 now. Yeah, and this is a situation where Willen Hills really needs to pay attention, stay alert, and not fall for any trick plays that Moon might try to throw at them on this play. Tigers a very sustained drive on their first opportunity with the football resulting in points. Thus far here in their second opportunity, nothing going. Trips to the left, two receivers right, empty set for Kanichka. He's pressured again, throwing to the left. They set up the wide receiver screen. It is complete to Josh Burns, and Josh Burns will pick up a huge chunk of that 18 yards, about 16 of them, but it's still fourth down and two, shy of the 45. And with the way that the Moon Tigers have been able to move the ball on this Woodland Hills defense, going for it on fourth down is not outside the realm of possibility. 
Three catches for 33 yards thus far for Josh Burns as it appears the offense is still out there on the field. On fourth down and two. Again, the ball is at the 44. Nitschke will set in the pistol. Two receivers right. And uh, I'm not sure if Moon got the timeout in before the delay of game or not. It looks like they did. So a stoppage on the field with 3.56 to play in the first quarter. Woodland Hills on top of Moon, 7-3. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Back at Moon Stadium where Woodland Hills leads the Moon Tigers by a score of 7-3. Adam Gusky, Fred Guy on the call for you here in the West Hills of Pittsburgh. Punt unit now on for Moon after having to burn a timeout, considering going for it on fourth and two. Punt away by Nick Sebastian, and the Wolverines will allow it to bounce to the far sideline, and Sebastian's punt takes a very nice roll for Moon and will finally die around the 12, and that's where Woodland Hills will start first down and 10. And I think that was a smart call by the Moon coach to, to punt. I mean, you put if you can... You don't want to want to put your sit, your team in a situation where they're having to defend a short field, and uh, the punt by Sebastian certainly has changed that. That is for sure. Switching the field position as Woodland Hills will start this drive at the uh, 18. That's where the officials say the first touch was by the Tigers. Not at the 12, where the ball was ultimately down. Pistol formation. Two receivers right in their wing to the right. Handoff, Denard, and he will be met uh, three yards deep in the backfield. They'll say he's able to get back to the 16, ultimately for a loss of two, but a gang of red jerseys are in there to make the tackle for Moon. And that was led by number 59, Cal Kamikoski. Just did a great job of blowing through the offensive line of Woodland Hills and making a tackle in the backfield. So Denard, two carries, 64 yards and a touchdown thus far for Woodland Hills. Clock winding the three minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first quarter. One receiver to the short side left, two receivers to the near side right. Whitehurst in the pistol again. Wolverines running the counter to the near side right. Huge hole, and Denard has the first down and more for Woodland Hills as he's finally brought down from behind, crossing the 30 to the 33-yard line. You know, you mentioned the absence of Jawan Hill uh, for this Woodland Hills offense, but it really doesn't seem like they're missing a step in the running game because uh, Rodney Denard is just doing a great job of finding holes, and the offensive line is doing a great job of opening it up for him. 18-yard pickup for Denard. He now has three carries for 82 yards. He'll step out for a rest. And Jaquan Smith will come in in his stead. Again, receivers split to either side. Wing to the left. Whitehurst throws to the left. The pass complete to that far boundary. And Oppen Abramovitz is wrestled down as he crosses the 45 to the 47-yard line. Rather, the 35 to the 37-yard line. Where it'll be second down and six. A gain of four on that play. And that's a connection we're happy to see back. Uh, Abramov or, uh, Whitehurst to Abramovitz uh, did a great job. Mikey Whitehurst did a great job of throwing it to the outside shoulder of Abramovitz, so like, he put it where only uh, he could get it. Wing to the right, receiver split to either side. Wolverines running it to the near side right. Jaquan Smith turns the corner, he'll drive his way to the 39, but no further. A pickup of about two, and it is third down and four. Man, I'm surprised there wasn't a flag for face mask. I saw a hand come across the face mask of Jaquan Smith, but no flags or penalties called. Clock winding under two minutes to play in quarter number one. Woodland Hills on top of the Moon Tigers, 7-3. to 66-yard touchdown run by Rodney Denard, answering a 27-yard field goal for Nick Morrow. Third and four for Woody High. Two receivers right. Looking left the whole way, and the pass from Whitehurst intended for Robertson on that far boundary is incomplete, and that incomplete pass brings up fourth and four, and the punt unit comes on for Woody High. Yeah, I think this throw was rushed a little bit by Mikey Whitehurst. I don't think he had um, Robinson in his sight and uh, was unable to complete pass. I think he may have heard a few footsteps from Kyle Kamenkoski coming from behind him. So the Wolverines face a fourth and four. Whitehurst 
It's an end over end punt away. It'll take a Woodland Hills bounce at the 26 and continue to roll in favor of the Wolverines inside of the 20 to about the 18 where Michael McAllister will pick it up. They'll say just shy of the 19, in fact, and uh, the Tigers will start their first down and 10. And give some credit to, to that uh, drive, to the Moon Tiger defense. They were able to force uh, some bad passes by uh, Mikey White, or one bad pass by Mikey Whitehurst, but uh, did a good job of stepping up when they really needed to. So again, Moon's drive starting at the 19. Konichka will set in the shotgun. Twins to either side, sidecar to his right. Straight drop back, looking left the whole way. The pass behind the intended receiver, Josh Burns, but he will slide down and make the catch, picking up about five. Coverage and tackle by Derek Carraway. And that was an impressive catch by Burns, really pulling it off the pulling it off the turf. Pretty much a rhythm passing game thus far for the Moon Tigers. They haven't gone deep by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, just a one incompletion by my account thus far for Kanichka. He's now in an empty set with three receivers to the right and two in the near side left. Straight drop back. Looking to the near side. The pass complete down the near boundary. Great hands again by Josh Burns to snag that one. And he will step out of bounds at the 44-yard line for a big pickup for Moon. And it looked like Burns ran off Damian T. Thomas on that play. And just uh, once he got uh, saw that he got past, uh, Thomas was able to just to come just out to the flats a little bit and uh, make a nice catch. 20-yard completion, the largest of the game for Moon. Trips to the short side left. Kanichka in the shotgun with two receivers to the right. Straight drop back. He'll look left. The pass intended for Josh Burns, and he found his way behind a Woody High D-back. But uh, Rodney Denard had the over-the-top coverage, and the pass falls incomplete. Good job of, of Denard of having that over-the-top coverage, because if not, uh, Burns, and if that ball was completed, Burns probably could have gone a long way. He definitely seems like he's a speedy enough receiver that he could do some damage in this ballgame. Moon will set in the pistol this time. And now the back will move to the right-hand side as the sidecar trips right. Kanichka straight drop back. Looking across the middle, the pass in and out of the hands of Ray Quinn Glover. And Glover can't hang on to that one. And the incomplete pass brings up third down and 10. Moon Hills is getting really fortunate uh, with these passes. I mean, the quarterback seems to be throwing darts out there. And he's hitting these receivers in the hands, but they're just getting lucky with these drop balls. Kanichka getting the play from the sideline. As Glover will run to the far side right, bringing trips to the right of the formation. One receiver left. Kanichka is going to run a quarterback draw straight up the gut, sliding past one Wolverine, but he'll get to the midfield stripe and be wrapped and brought down by uh, Deontay Robertson. A gain of about a half a dozen, and will bring up fourth down and four. A good job of the offensive line of uh, the Moon Tigers of really paving the way for Kanishka to pick up those yards. And uh, the Tigers will be satisfied going to quarter number two, trailing Woodland Hills by four points, seven to three. We'll step away again. And it's the Woodland Hills Wolverine seven. And the Moon Tigers three. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Seven to three, Woodland Hills leading the Moon Tigers. Ball at the midfield stripe where it's fourth down and four for Moon. Their punt unit is on. And the ever dangerous Derek Kerwin appears to be back deep to return for Woody High. The punter, Michael Bates. For Moon. And Woodland Hills moved early. And the Wolverines breaching the neutral zone gives the Moon Tigers five yards and a first down. Well, that's frustrating, Fred. Yeah, it has to be, especially for Coach Novak. You have 
you know, the Moon punt team ready to give the ball back to one of the most dangerous punt returners in the WPIL. And then a little bit of a brain slippage costs, uh, gives uh, the Moon Tigers first down. Yeah, Quintel Palmer coming up the middle, and he is the one that stepped across the neutral zone. Warranting the flag, and it is first and 10 for Moon. The ball at the Woodland Hills 45 now. Kanichka in the shotgun. He'll work off a of play action, rolling to the near side right. Hit as he releases the football, and it will be, oh, nearly intercepted in and out of the hands of Jalen Holloway, the D-back for Woody High, who had a great game a week ago. Nearly made a big play there. And that's something that Woodland Hills defensively hasn't had too many of this season in terms of takeaways by the by way of the interception. You know, typically we're so used to seeing, um, you know, D-backs come up with, you know, five, ten interceptions in a season. So far, enough, or probably one or two so far on the season. Yeah, we saw a big one a week ago, obviously, by Jaquan Smith, but uh, that was a rarity to say the least. Quarterback Kanichka pulling the ball out of the belly of the tailback and deciding to keep it himself. And uh, he pays the price as a pair of Woodland Hills defensive linemen make the play. Michael Lucas and John Robinson on the tackle. And they really, they really put it to Kanichka on that last play. Three carries, 26 yards for Kanichka. His first one covered 20. That one, no gain. And it is third and 10 for Moon. The ball in the middle of the field at the Woodland Hills 45. Clock winding to 11.20 to play in the first half. Woodland Hills on top, 7-3. Shotgun for Kanichka as he will motion to an empty set. Looking left, now looking back to the right-hand side. And the pass this time is intercepted by Woodland Hills. Leaping up and taking it away is Derek Carraway. It'll be first and 10 for the Wolverines at the 34. And Derek Carraway did a great job of just beating the receiver to the spot. And then once he got both of his hands on the football, he was able to bring it in. And that's got to be reassuring after having those two drops against North Hills last week offensively. That's for sure, Fred. And uh, you know, that was certainly tough for him. And the Wolverines, uh, on both of those drops by Carraway, had a lot of greenery in front of number one on the offensive side of the ball. There he comes down shorthanded defensively. Let's hope that can translate into offense later if necessary. 11.06 to play in the first half. Woodland Hill starts this drive with their own 34. Jones will start this drive at quarterback for Woodland Hills. A broken play as Jones looked to hand off to Denard. They were not on the same page, and Jones is driven back. They will say that he was met at the 28-yard line before being driven back by the rest of the Tiger squad. And a loss of a half dozen brings up second and 16. And that's a great heads-up play by Jones. Of once he realized that the running back wasn't there, just decided to tuck it and try to pick up something, but uh, the Moon Tigers did a great job of really gang tackling Jones. So loss of six, second and 16, the ball at the Woodland Hills 28 yard line. Woodland Hills right to left across your computer screen or TV screen. One receiver split to either side, a wing to the right as well. Denard dots the pistol. He'll take the handoff. Stiff arm and spin. Cutting it back to the near side left, trying to drive his way back to the 30, but he will be brought down at the 29 for a gain of just one, and it is third down and 15. Yeah, it looks like Willen Hill shied the run just right off the right tackle, and there was tremendous penetration by the Moon Tigers. And luckily for that stiff arm, uh, Rodney Denard would have been tackled in the backfield, but was able to, to make something out of nothing. Two receivers right, one to the near side left. Jones is in the pistol with Denard behind him on third and 15. Jones pressured as he rolls to the left, and the ball came loose. And will the officials say it's a forward pass, or will uh, they say it uh, was Jones covering it up? They say he does cover it up back at the 22-yard line, and it's a huge loss on the play. That's a great job of the, the Tiger defense. They brought six guys. Uh, both linebackers decided to blitz and got tremendous penetration, and luckily for Jones, that ball, fell, that ball came out, but it fell right back onto his chest. Loss of seven on that play. And Jones responsible for a loss of 13 yards in that drive as the Wolverines face a fourth and 21. And as the Wolverines were setting up the rugby punt, a flag flew. I think uh, this may be against the Tigers, but it's certainly not going to be 
enough to, and that's going to be against Woodland Hills, maybe a formational penalty. And the penalty will back Woody High up five more, and it will be fourth and 26, the ball at the 17. Woodland Hills looks for a huge punt here from Whitehurst. With just under nine minutes to play in the first half and a four-point lead. Good snap by McAllister. That allows Whitehurst to run to the right-hand side and get off a decent punt that will bounce around the 45 and go out of bounds. Uh, they'll say just at the 45-yard line. So not a bad punt covering uh, just under 30 yards, but still Moon taking over with good field position at the Woodland Hills 45-yard line. Yeah, and right now, as much as the Woodland Hills defense has been on the field so far in this ball game, they have to start. They have to be getting a little bit tired. Um, it doesn't seem like Coach Novak's platooning uh, any of the linebackers or secondary. So, you know, they've been on the field quite a bit so far in this game, in this ball game. Good news is not terribly warm by any stretch of the imagination. Temps in the low 50s for this football game. Stack to the right and a jet motion handoff going to Raquin Glover and Glover will drive his way inside of the 45 to around the 42 before being brought to the turf by the Wolverines tackled by Ashid Page Jones. You know, Glover, really, I mean, this is, I think the second time he's handled the ball so far in this ball game or been an intended target, but he is showing some tremendous speed coming around that right side. Willen Hills did a great job of really bottling it up before he could really get going. Yeah, Ray Quinton Glover was an intended receiver earlier, but was not able to grab onto a pass. Picking up three there on the jet sweep. Now Kanichka rolling to the left, throwing to the left. That pass is complete. It's enough for a moon first down on the catch. Torrey Fisher and Fisher brought down at the 31-yard line, a gain of 11, and it's first and 10 for Moon. The Tigers are doing a good job of running off the cornerback and strong side safety for Woodland Hills, which is leaving the flats wide open. And whoever the outside linebacker on that side really needs to start getting out there to cover the flats. So plays like that don't continue to happen. So a pickup of 11, first and 10, ball on the left pass, trips to the right. One receiver to the short side left, Kanichka sets in the pistol with the tailback behind him. Handoff will go to that tailback, and that's Brady Sunday who will dance his way to around the 30-yard line before being driven down. Tackled by uh, Tyrell Barlow, making his first appearance of the season after a off-season injury held him out through the first six, uh, seven weeks of the season. Yeah, good to see him back. But what uh, Woolen Hills, it seems to be a typical Woolen Hills defensive game. They're great against the run, but shoddy against the pass. Trips right, twins to the left. And H.K. in a shotgun all by himself. The look to the left-hand side, the pass high, but caught on the catch is Josh Burns. And say a gain of about uh, eight on the play, and maybe seven, and it's third down and two. And Kotchka doesn't take a lot of time uh, to pass once he gets the ball from center. He just real quick surveillance sees his open man and has been able to throw darts out there, especially to the flats. Kanichka will step under center, running to the right. He's grabbed and brought down. Uh, Michael McAllister in on the tackle for Woodland Hills, but a flag came in from the referee, and uh, that may be a face mask against McAllister. Check in with our referee to confirm. But it's a uh, five-yard face mask penalty against Woodland Hills. So Kanichka picks up one on the play. And uh, then you'll stack five on top of that one for ultimately a gain of six. And it's first and ten for Moon again inside of the Woodland Hills red zone. And it seems like a little bit of a mental mistake uh, by the Wolverines on that last play. You had the quarterback Kanichka stacked up, only gaining maybe a yard. Putting them in, could have put them in a, in a precarious fourth and two situation. 
Trips right, two receivers left. Kanichka pressured as he throws to the left-hand side. The pass is complete to Ray Quinn Glover, and Glover will drive his way inside of the 10 to the 7-yard line before being brought down by Barlow, amongst others. And Kanichka threw that into a, a lot of traffic uh, as he was trying to get the ball to Glover. I was kind of surprised that Glover was able to come up with the pass, but uh, or come up with the catch, but did a great job with the catch and then getting some more yards after Gain of 10, now Kanichka has eclipsed the century mark in the air, 103 yards passing unofficially. Trips to the left, two receivers right. Kanichka in the shotgun. And Kanichka will throw to left, and the ball is uh, bobbled and falls incomplete. A Wolverine had an opportunity to try to grab a hold of that one after the receiver over on that far side couldn't hang on. The intended receiver was Ray Quinn Glover. It's probably, yeah, I mean, it's certainly it's a good thing that the ball wasn't caught because Glover didn't have anybody in front of him once if he was able to get the ball and would have walked right into the end zone. So the drop by Glover brings up second and goal for Moon with the football at the Woodland Hills seven-yard line, 5.33 clock stopped here in the second quarter. Trips right, one receiver left. Sidecar to the right-hand side of Kanichka. Kanichka. Straight drop back, throws across the middle, and the pass is incomplete. The intended receiver was Nick Bonner. We also saw Glover in the vicinity as well, but the incompletion brings up third and goal with the seven. Yeah, I couldn't see who broke up that pass, but that was a great job. And I think it was one of the linebackers, Damian T. Thomas possibly, uh, putting his hand in there to break up that pass. Looks like the umpire did his best to get involved as well as a uh, pattern. Sent the receiver right behind the umpire, and the pass was uh, just to his right-hand side. So third and goal for the Tigers. The ball on the Woodland Hills, seven. Kanichka with trips left. One receiver right, sidecar to his right as well. He'll look to the right-hand side, and the pass is caught on the goal line and into the end zone goes Josh Burns for a Tiger touchdown. And that was just a three-step post play by Burns. And Kanichka did a great job of hitting him in stride and falling across the uh, goal line for the touchdown. Seven-yard touchdown, and the Tigers lead the Wolverines here by a score of 9-7 with 5.25 to go in the second quarter. On to attempt the PAT is Nick Morrow, and uh, the PAT is good. A flag comes down as well. And we will check in with the officials to see what this is before we step away. So the penalty coming after the PAT, so the touchdown will, or rather the point will count either way, but uh, we will have to see exactly what uh, the flag is for. It would be great for these officials to signal us and let us know exactly what the penalty was. All right. I guess, no, we're not going to get an indication of what the penalty was. The Tigers will uh, decline, I suppose. And... Uh, Okay, the umpire gave the signal, not the referee. Why, I have no clue. Something I've never But it was running into the... Hand off. Denard running to the right. He'll be wrapped and brought down two yards deep in the backfield. Tackle made by Nick Bonner. I think Bonner came up from his linebacker position to make that tackle, just blowing through the offensive line of Woolen Hills. And right now, they, the Woolen Hills offensive line is, with the exception of the first play, the first offensive play uh, of the game, has really looked lack, lack, lackluster uh, so far in this ballgame. 
Pistol formation with the, uh, Denard behind Jones. Jones looking right, throwing right. He has a receiver down that far boundary. It'll be caught by Avram Abramovitz, and he'll be wrestled down at the 31-yard line. First and 10 for the Wolverines on a huge pickup. And that's a great look by Daniel Jones to seeing that he had a mismatch in terms of height uh, advantage for Abramovich standing at six foot three, uh, Glover standing at five foot six. So obviously you have a height differential there and just took advantage of it. So a big pickup there for the Wolverines. And it's first and 10 for Woodland Hills at the 32. Forty-four yard pickup there. Jones sends Caraway in motion from right to left. He'll take the end around on the jet sweep. Now reversing his field from left to right, looking to pick up some blockers over there. Caraway picking up positive yardage, spinning, still on his feet around the thirty-yard line, and he'll be brought down as he retreats to the thirty-one. Well, Derek Caraway ran a mile and picked up a yard. Yeah, that was one of the more impressive two-yard runs that uh, we've seen in our time. But Derek Caraway did a great job of really directing traffic once he made the cutback to his right side. And again, only picking up about maybe two yards was Derek Caraway. And good job of Woodland Hills of restraining themselves for any blocks in the back. So Caraway with the one yard gain and the Wolverines setting the pistol on second and nine at the 31 yard line of the Moon Tigers. Hand off, Denard has a hole for a moment. It closes as he is brought down around the 27 yard line. A flag came in from the umpire right at a Woodland Hills offensive lineman and traditionally that means holding. Officials will determine where the uh, infraction happened and then march off 10 yards from there. And the umpire says it happens at the 30. So 10 yards from there is back to the 40 yard line. Ultimately a loss on that play of uh, nine yards and it's second down and 18. I don't see much of a hold anywhere uh, in our field of view. But it's second and 18 for Woodland Hills. The ball at the moon 40. Bunch to the left. One receiver right. Jones steps forward. He's going to cross the 40. And uh, still on his feet as he steps out of bounds around the 36-yard line. The whistle blew a little before he stepped out. And they will say his forward progress was stalled at the 37 for a gain of three. I can't. I'm trying to see if Daniel Jones maybe mishandled the snap, but it didn't. He just got a little spooked by one of the uh, off or defensive linemen coming in for a rush and didn't even look to his left side where he had three receivers and just decided to pull the ball down and start running. So pickup of three on that play, and it's third and 15 for Woodland Hills at the 37. Can the Wolverines send trips to the left? Not in a bunch, though. There's, uh, there's one receiver to the short side right, low snap. Jones setting up the screen, dumping it off. Jaquan Smith, he's inside of the 30, spinning towards the 28-yard line where he will be brought down around the 27. And Fred, there was a ton of room to the right, but uh, Smith instead brought it to the near side left and was not able to pick up the first down. Yeah, I was kind of surprised he didn't keep it out to the right-hand side. Uh, had his uh, blockers were on that side as well, but I uh, guess he thought he found a, a cutback lane and... Uh, Moon did a great job of holding them to a fourth down. So a pickup of 10 there, and Woodland Hills faces a fourth and five at the 37. The Wolverines take a timeout, so we'll step away too. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Back at Moon Stadium where Woodland Hills trails Moon 10 to seven, the Wolverines Threatening though, but they do face a fourth and five at the Moon Tigers 27 yard line. Offense on the field for Woodland Hills as they'll split two receivers to the left, one 
to the far side right. Ball in the center of the field as Rodney Denard is the sidecar to the left-hand side of Daniel Jones, the quarterback. And while Jones had a hard count trying to draw the Tigers off, it looked like Avram Abramovitz moved early, and that's going to cost Woodland Hills five yards. So instead of fourth and five, it's fourth and ten now for Woodland Hills at the 32. And that's certainly going to change your play call uh, from a fourth and five to a fourth and ten. But Woodland Hills really has been shooting themselves in the foot, especially on third down, third or fourth down with uh, offsides and false starts. So now fourth and ten is Denard. Well, set as the sack card of the left-hand side of Jones. Two receivers left, one to the far side right. We have a delay here as the referee came over to speak with the Moon coaching staff, including their head coach, Brendan Hathaway. Jones looking right the whole way, throwing to the right for Avram Abramovitz, or rather that's Deontay Robertson over on that far side, and that pass out of bounds. Robertson wasn't able to pull it in. And had he been able to catch it, he would have been out of bounds anyhow. And the incomplete pass brings up four, uh, a turnover on downs and first and ten for Moon. Yeah, I'm really surprised also that the safety for Moon didn't see that that was coming. Well, actually, he came into the shot pretty late. But um, that, that's, just something, that's something that Willen Hills really needs to take advantage of is the height differential that they have between uh, Glover and Rob with Robinson and Ramovich. Just take advantage of that height and – don't really have to go deep on every play, but just make sure that they can get the, the quarterbacks and get the ball out to those receivers. Well, the Hills chewed up uh, three and a half minutes there and picked up a lot of yardage, but came out with no points and still trailed the Tigers by three. Bunch formation to the right. Handoff will go to the tailback. Up the gut goes Brady Sunday, and uh, he'll pick up about two before being wrestled down by a host of white jerseys. Number 10 for Willard Hills. Collins did a great job of really being the first uh, Wolverine darting in there from his linebacker position and uh, made sure that the running back couldn't get any further. Pickup of two, second and eight for Moon. Clock winds to 110 to play in the second quarter. Again, bunch to the right. Kanichka sets in the shotgun. Now they're running the Wildcat now. Anthony Panucci is the QP, and uh, Panucci is going to cross the 45 to the, rather the 35 to the 37 as a flag comes in. This is going to push the Tigers back, I do believe. So while Panucci picked up about three, it'll be all for naught as that flag came in. And Fred, I'll tell you what, boy, we've got a lot of discussion between these officials tonight. A little bit more than Probably we should. It's for sure. Just make the call and uh, let's move on with it. Because it'll be a chop block against the Tigers. That'll move them back from uh, the 34-yard line. It'll be a 15-yard penalty, or rather a 10-yard penalty. Back to the 24-yard line. And a timeout is taken by Woodland Hills. That'll give us an opportunity to press the reset button too. Second down and long for Moon when we return with just our minute to play. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Follow the Woodland Hills Football Network on Twitter. Twitter.com slash WHFootballNet. As we return to Moon Stadium, they assess the additional five yards on the chop block penalty, which is the proper yardage you assess on a chop block. I don't understand how you have five officials out there and then not know the yardage of a penalty. So the ball now backed up to the 19 yard line. It'll be second down and 23 for Moon with just under 55 seconds to play. Again, the Wildcat formation is Panucci sets his QB. He'll run to the left, he'll step his way forward, picking up positive yardage, and he will be brought down up around the shoulders. Tackle made by Amir Collins, 
Woodland Hills using a uh, timeout. I believe uh, their final timeout of the half as Collins makes that tackle on the gain of eight for Panucci and will step away one final time. When we return, we will carry the second half, un or the rest of the second quarter, uninterrupted for you. It's 10 to seven, noon on top of Woodland Hills. Return to the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. A chilly 57 degree night here in Moon Township as Panucci will run out of the Wildcat running to the left. He will cross the 30 to the 35, maybe the 36 yard line. It will not be enough for the first down. The clock will run here and the Tigers will certainly use up as much of it as they can facing this fourth down and seven. I'm trying to figure out if Moon's gonna bring their punting team on the field, it looks like. They're doing it pretty late as well. Got three second difference yeah. in the play clock and the game clock. Punter Nick Sebastian finally runs on here. I think the Tigers may either use a timeout or uh, take the penalty. They will use a timeout with just under three seconds to go. And you've got to assume, Fred, that the, you know, the thought process right now keep the ball away from the ever-dangerous Derek Carraway. Do that, and you go into the locker room with a surprising lead over Woodland Hills. Yeah, I mean, and that's the, that's the thing. The, the punter has to get off a kick well away from Derek Carraway because, you know, in those 2.7 seconds that are left on the game clock, he could be standing in the end zone if you're going to kick it to him, and Woodland Hills can set up a good punt, uh, punt return. And this is something we saw a week ago where Woodland Hills was able to score late in the second quarter, take some momentum into the locker room before getting the ball to begin the second half. Uh, obviously, if Derek Carraway is able to somehow get a hold of the ball and return it for a touchdown, obviously the momentum swings back in favor of the Wolverines. But right now, it is squarely on the side of the Moon Tigers. And Woodland Hills has to be feeling a little bit of uh, shell shock after blowing out so many opponents in conference, winning a very close, tough game a week ago, and right now trailing the Tigers, a team they thought they were going to be able to defeat handily. Well, this does have the makings of a trap game, considering, you know, Moon 2-4 uh, and four overall in the season. You know, their, their wins come, you know, their last win coming against uh, uh, Chartier's Valley, a team that Woodland Hills absolutely blew out during the season. And then you don't want to overlook the fact that, you know, you have the Moon Tigers, and next week you have West Allegheny at home. So the offense on the field here for Moon, I think they're just going to try to kill the clock. Panucci in the Wildcat. He will retreat and slide down. And uh, unfortunately for his personal stats, it will be a loss of 14 yards. But fortunately for the Moon Tigers, they're going to be able to take a three-point lead into the locker room on top of the Woodland Hills Wolverines. And Fred, like you said, the makings of a trap game. And thus far, uh, those... Uh, fears are coming to fruition. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a situation where, you know, you have a team, again, that hasn't uh, really stepped up. I mean, that hasn't stepped up this season, but, you know, you get a top-tier team, a top-two team in the Whippeal coming into your house, you're going to play a little bit tougher, and so far the Moon Tigers have done just that. Again, your halftime score is 10-7, to 7, Moon leading Woodland Hills. Folks on the television side, we will be back with half number two if you're watching live on Facebook. Stay tuned for the Woodland Hills and Moon Township Tiger marching bands. If you're listening on msasports.net, stay tuned for the Woodland Hills Football Network halftime show. One more time, your halftime score, 10-7. to 7, Moon leads Woodland Hills. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. And we welcome you back to Moon Area Stadium on the campus of Moon Area High School in Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky, Fred Guy on the call for you getting set to begin the second half where the Moon Tigers lead the Woodland Hills Wolverines by a surprising score of 10 to 7. And uh, Fred, thus far, the passing game has certainly gotten it done for the Moon Tigers, and it has been rather efficient. Yeah, they seem to be confusing the secondary of Bolton Hills uh, with the trips uh, to one side and then over, basically overloading the one side, running off the defensive backs and just leaving the flats wide open, which needs to be covered by a linebacker. But Bolton Hills just hasn't made that adjustment. Let's hope they can do so in the second half. Before today's game, we talked about playoff implications for both of these teams. Right now, Moon on the outside looking in, but a win today would certainly 
uh, helped them go a long way to qualifying for the WPIAL 5A playoffs. Woodland Hills has already qualified for the playoffs, but they need a win today to try to keep pace with the West Allegheny Indians who come to the Wolverine next Friday night. Woodland Hills wins tonight. They win next week. They clinch at least a share of the conference title. And of course, Upper St. Clair, just a game behind both West Allegheny and Woodland Hills. And USC comes to the Wolverine in two weeks. Yeah, and that could, I mean, this has the making for a potential um, three-way tie. If Woodland Hills is able to uh, beat we win tonight, beat West Allegheny next week, and some happen some, somehow happens to lose to Upper St. Clair, then you have a three-way tie for first place. Back underway for the second half as the ball will roll down to the 16-yard line where it's scooped up by Seed Holt. Holt uh, across the 25, still on his feet out towards the 30 as a couple of flags will fly in. And uh, a good chunk of this return is going to be negated. And while the officials will uh, congregate, uh, we do assume to discuss what the uh, penalties were. We will see the Wolverines pushed back, and that'll give us an opportunity to uh, talk about the uh, MSA Sports top 10 rankings. We saw a few moments ago where West Allegheny still sits atop the top 10, while Woodland Hills has moved up to number two after Upper St. Clair losing to West Allegheny a week ago. Upper St. Clair ranked third. Armstrong is fourth at six and one. Armstrong, the top team out of the Big East Conference. McKeesport out of the Big East at well as well. Ranked fifth at five and one. Gateway, five and two. And then you round out the top ten with Franklin, Penn Trafford, Kiske in North Hills. As the handoff will go to seed, hold over the right-hand side. He is still on his feet as he will be spun down, approaching the first down marker. This drive officially starting at the Woodland Hills 20. If Seed Holt picks up all 10, it's a Woodland Hills first down, and he does. Yeah, and I don't think Saeed Holt played all but maybe one snap. Was, was actually not even a snap. Played on the kickoff team uh, in the first half and didn't really play any offense and didn't play any defense at all. So it's interesting to see that Coach Novak is going to use him in the second half how he's going to use them in the second half, I should say. So first and 10 for Woodland Hills. Ball at the 30. Running to the left is Seed Holt. He's going to reverse his field, running to the far side. A flag will fly in down around the 26-yard line. Seed Holt will be wrestled down back near the 18. And uh, if I'm the Moon Tigers, Fred, I think I decline this one. Take the down and the huge loss. Absolutely. And that is the indication from the nearest sideline as head coach Brendan Hathaway indicates he's declining the penalty. So Holt will uh, pick up 10 on his first carry and then lose a dozen on his second. So Holt a net of minus two thus far today. Two receivers to the right of the formation, one to the near side left. Woodland Hills has the ball second down and 22 with the ball at the 18 yard line. The line to gain is the 40 of the Wolverines. Seed Holt dots the pistol behind Michael Whitehurst. Russian man from right to left. Handoff, Holt bouncing it to the right-hand side. Gets to the 20 and then is pulled back. They'll say he just gets to the 19, so a gain of just one. And it is third down and 21. And just you have to give your hats off to the Moon Tiger defense. They're doing a great job really of keeping... Uh, the running backs for Wilden Hills at bay so far in this game. Well, with the exception of Rodney Denard's uh, touchdown run. Yeah, if you subtract that run for Woodland Hills, the Wolverines would have 75 yards of rush, or rather, at nine yards of rushing. They currently have 75. Pass to the near side left is complete to Derek Carraway, but he will be brought down. Deep in the backfield, they'll say his forward progress stopped at the 14 before being brought down at the 13. So that is a loss of five on that pass play to Derek Carraway. And number 52, Alec Yoakum made the stop. Um, basically coming from his defensive line linebacker position and making a, a nice secure tackle right around the waist of Derek Carraway. 
So Whitehurst on to punt here on fourth and 26. Gets away a spiraling punt that will back the Tigers up and a very nice bounce on the punt by Whitehurst will benefit the Wolverines greatly as that ball will roll inside of the 35 and uh, die down at the 34 yard line where it'll be first down and 10 for the Moon Tigers. Great uh, reversal of field position there from the 14 to the 35. And if we were to uh, give out the player of the, uh, the game award, it might have to go to Mikey Whitehurst for his punting ability. He's done a great job of bailing out the uh, offense with some significant and magnificent punting. 51-yard punt there for Michael Whitehurst, and it will be first and 10 for the Tigers at the 35. Visit our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash WHFootballNetwork for videos including HD coverage of Wolverines all year long. Pass to the near side, Let, right complete. Kanichka finds his favorite target in Josh Burns, and Burns is off to the races down the near sideline, finally shoved out of bounds inside of Woodland Hills territory at the 41-yard line, a pickup on that play of uh, 24. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if, actually I would be surprised if Coach Novak were to uh, at least pull a defensive line and get another defensive back out there that could do some damage against this Moon Tiger offense because the quarterback's just doing a great job of taking one step from the, from the snap and just throwing the ball to the flats and they've been really efficient in that so far in this game. Kanichka in the pistol, he'll hand off to the tailback behind him, the ball carrier Brady Sunday. Not much room there as he's driven back by Michael Whitehurst, also in the tackle, Deontay Robertson. A gain of one and it's second down and nine. And again, Willen Hills has done a great job in this ball game of stopping the run. That's not the issue uh, with this unit. The unit, the, the issue is uh, being able to cover these receivers and running backs coming out of the backfield. Kadijka motion, empty set, looks to the near side, right where the pass is complete. Ray Quinn Glover makes the catch. Jaquan Smith makes the tackle. Gain of three on the play. And it is third down and seven. A good job of Jaquan Smith of not uh, really reading the play. Saw that the wide receiver was coming out uh, you know, for a little two, three yard stop. And uh, Jaquan Smith came up and made a nice tackle. Make it uh, third down and six for the Moon Tigers with the football at the Woodland Hills 37-yard line. Trips to the right sidecar, trips to the left rather, sidecar to the right-hand side of Kanichko with the receiver to the near side right as well. Kanichko going down this near boundary and the pass intended for Josh Burns, but the uh, pass well off the mark and Burns wouldn't have been an eligible receiver anyhow as he had stepped out of bounds coming down this near boundary. Yeah, good job of Derek Carraway step for step with Burns. And, and as you said, he stepped out of bounds around the 20-yard line, which wouldn't have made a difference anyway, even if he had caught the ball. So the punt unit will come on for the Moon Tigers. Nick Sebastian steps on to punt it away, and uh, Derek Carraway stands at his own 10-yard line. Very dangerous Derek Carraway. Return man for Woody High. Fourth and six, good snap. Sebastian gets the punt away. A knuckler that will be fair caught by Carraway at the six yard line and Woodland Hills will start first and 10 from there. And that was a good decision by Derek Carraway to, to make the fair catch at the five yard. And typically, if it's anything over the 10 yard line, you're gonna wanna let it bounce, but the Moon Tigers did a great job of getting down there on punt coverage. And probably if Derek Carraway lets that ball bounce, they're probably looking at a uh, drive starting on their own one yard line that it'll start at the six. Wilden Hills will start first down and 10, their second drive of the second half. Again, a three-point lead for the Moon Tigers, 10 to seven. As Michael Whitehurst will get to QB this series as well. The official has yet to wind the play clock and uh, we will see Michael Whitehurst have an opportunity to talk things over with his teammates for a few extra seconds here on first and 10 at their own six. Pistol formation, receiver split to either side. Redhurst in the pistol, hard count. And the movement to see Holt flinches early. 
And this is going to cost Woodland Hills half the distance to the goal line. You know, it really just dawned on me a couple seconds ago the fact that uh, Woodland Hills was so used to last year running a two-back offense. Uh, we really haven't seen too much of that so far this year, and it wouldn't be a bad thing for them to get back to it. You have a, a speedy runner in Denard. You have a uh, thundering back in Holt. You might as well just take advantage of, of those two and see what can happen. Well, right now the Wolverines will stay with one back set with Holt behind Whitehurst. And the receiver to the left-hand side on first down and 13. The ball at the three. Hand off Holt running right. He'll drive his way forward, uh, getting to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard to the four. And it will be second down and 12 from that four-yard line. And four carries, zero yards thus far for Seed. Holt after running for 10 on his first carry. He's rushed for minus eight, one, and one yard, respectively. And, and Moon, the Moon Tigers are, are doing a great job of stacking the box, putting seven guys, uh, seven, sometimes eight guys in the box to try to stop this run for Woodland Hills. Hard count again by Whitehurst, handoff, Holt running to the right-hand side, crossing the five, spinning his way forward, but uh, he'll pick up just about uh, two or three out towards the seven or eight-yard line. We'll see where they spot the ball. It'll be third and long for the Wolverines either way. It'll be third down. And about eight. And the one thing the Woodland Hills Wolverines, especially in offense, need to understand, it's not panic time. Um, you're only down three. You have some explosive weapons, so the game can change at any point. You just have to stay, you know, stay on your blocks a little bit longer and try to open up these holes for these running backs. Third and nine for Woodland, third and eight rather for Woodland Hills. Handoff Holt running to the left hand side. He's met from behind. And the ball is ripped out of seed. Holt's hand. And a defensive lineman will run into the end zone for a touchdown. Alec Yakum just ripped the ball out of seed. Holt's hand and ran eight yards for a touchdown for the Moon Tigers. And, you know, I'm not really surprised that that has happened. Saeed Holt has had an issue with keeping the ball away from his body, especially as he's coming through the line. Didn't really see Yakum as he uh, was able to strip the ball away from him and just took it away from him and found some blocking and went around the right side and into the end zone. So it'll be a 10-yard fumble return for a touchdown by Alec Yakum. And we will see Morrow on to attempt the PAT. And now the officials will talk things over yet again. I don't know what the possible question could be here. I mean, Seed Holt went from the ten, uh, eight to the 10 yard line. Alec Yakum, the defensive end, grabbed a hold of him from behind, ripped the football out of his hands, and ran into the end zone for a touchdown. The only thing I can think of is there may have been a penalty against the Tigers for excessive celebration after the penalty was over, and that's exactly what it is. So the unsportsmanlike conduct took forever to discuss and then determine where it was going to be assessed. I'm glad we don't have a plane to catch. At least we'd be in Moon Township to do so. Yeah, and then they back the ball up, which it, the penalty is going to be accessed on the kickoff anyway, so I don't know why they would back the ball up yeah. just to place it back on the two-yard line. Uh, and I don't understand why they couldn't just look over to Coach Novak, make the signal, ask what he wanted. Instead, it took forever to get this done. So right now, Woodland Hills is down by nine. Morrow looks to make it a 10-point lead for the Tigers, and he does so. 6.36 to play in the third frame. It's Moon 17, Woodland Hills 7. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. 17-7, Woodland Hills trails the Moon Tigers. Alec Yakum just rips the football away from Seed Holt and brings it to the near sideline and runs into the end zone for... A 10-yard touchdown, PAT up and in for Nick Morrow, and the Wolverines are down by 10 points. And Willen Hills really, I mean, they have to be stunned at this point. 
Uh, being down 10 in the second half against a, a team they came in heavily favored against. Um, but again, hats off to the Moon Tigers. They're doing everything they need to do to keep themselves in this ballgame. Ball bouncing around and past uh, Seed Hold. It will be scooped up by Derek Carraway around the 23-yard line. He'll run down the far sideline. He'll go end over end down that far boundary out near the midfield stripe. And uh, the officials will say he stepped out around the 46. It will be first down and 10. I mean, it's still really good field position for the Wilton Hills offense to start on. Um, and really, they just need to get it together on the offensive line. The offensive line seems like they're struggling against this Moon uh, defensive front, whether they're not expecting the size or speed uh, of the front four, you know, is something that they're going to have to contend with. So again, first and 10 for Woody High, the ball at the 46-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the far side right. Right Hurst settles in the pistol. Straight drop back, looking to the left. He's going to throw to the left, and the pass is complete to Avram Abramovitz inside of Tiger territory. They'll say he gets to the 46-yard line before being driven back. A pickup of eight, and it's second down and two. And yeah, I wasn't even sure if Mikey Whitehurst was going to throw that football, but did a great job of locating Abramovitz and, and making a pass where only uh, Abramovitz can go and get it. Three of four today for seven yards is Michael Whitehurst. That completion of eight yards was his longest. So again, second and two for the Wolverines. The ball at the Moon Tiger 46-yard line. Seed Holt moves again. Somebody needs to tell Saeed Holt that he can actually continue to keep moving once he starts in motion. He can just go out to the flats as a motion man and not stop. Well, Fred, we saw that uh, you know, a few times over the years, even with uh, the tailbacks of the ilk of um, the Miles Sanders. There were times where he would rock forward a little bit and uh, he would kind of surrender and take the penalty instead of trying to go into motion. And that's unfortunate that uh, Wilden Hills sees five of the eight yards they picked up on first down disappear on a false start by the tailback. Wolverine stack two receivers to either side. Hand off, Holt running right. Inside of the 50, he'll get back to the 46 yard line and it will be third down and two. The patience right now is the key phrase for, for Woodland Hills at this point. They really need to pick up this first down. Uh, third and two, very manageable for these guys. Uh, and just keep matriculating the ball down the field. There doesn't need to be uh, a home run hit, although if that happens, that happens. Good for those guys. They just need to uh, be patient at this point in the ballgame. Two receivers left, one to the far side right. Whitehurst in the pistol. He'll hand off. Holt trying to bounce it left. He loses his footing. He gets to the 45-yard line. Now a flag came in thrown right at the football, and uh, the Tigers may be guilty of, of a uh, face mask here. And that would be great for Woodland Hills because they would uh, pick up the first down. While well, it was uh, just a one-yard gain for Holt, they're going to say an incidental face mask. And the five-yard face mask penalty will move the ball from the 45 to the 40, and it's a first down for the Wolverines. But, I mean, really lucky play for the Woodland Hills Wolverines. I still think it, even if there wasn't a flag, Woodland Hills would still go for it on fourth down considering the situation. But... Uh, you know, Wilton Hills was able to pick up the penalty, or pick up the first down by the penalty. Yeah, as we so took a look at the TV replay, Tory Fisher certainly did grab a hold of the face mask of Seed Hole on that stop. Trips to the right. Wilton Hills setting up the receiver screen, and a nice job breaking on the football when Jake Dunning, and uh, he tipped the pass intended for Derek Carraway away. Nearly had an opportunity to intercept it, but the incomplete pass brings up second down and 10. Yeah, and I think Moon was really looking uh, for that play to happen, and that's how number 15 Dunning was able to, to just basically read it, see it, and then put a hand up to uh, bat that ball away. Clock stop 429 to play in the third quarter. Woodland Hills trails the Moon Tigers 17 to 7. Trips to the right of the formation. Whitehurst in the pistol with Holt behind him and one receiver to the near side left. 
Whitehurst dropping back, looking right the whole way, and the pass intended, I think, for Deontay Robertson is off the mark, and uh, there was really no white jersey anywhere in the vicinity of that football. In fact, Ray Quinn Glover for the Tigers was the closest person to the football. I don't know if... Look, look like Mikey Whitehurst had his eyes downfield, but I, I think he got stuck in between passes, or actually receivers. He was, wanted to go to Robinson, but he saw Caraway in the flats and just winged it after that. Well, the incomplete pass brings up third down and 10 with the football at the 40-yard line. 10-point lead for the Tigers. Ball in the left hash, two receivers. Three receivers to the right as Whitehurst takes the snap. Looks across the middle for Abramovitz and the pass is high and incomplete. And now it's fourth and 10. Abramovitz wasn't wide open, but he was certainly in front of his defender. And if that ball was put right into the bread basket, Abramovitz usually will come up with that and pick up the first down. So it'll be fourth and 10 for Woodland Hills with the football at the 40 yard line. Loon's going to send one man back deep to return. And Wolverine's setting up the fake. It's Seed Holt down the near sideline. He's got the first down and more inside of the 25 to the 22 yard line. A pickup of 18 yards. Now we're in the press box. We could hear the Moon coaches anticipating the fake. They thought it was going to be a pass, but. The Wolverines went with the run, and Seed Holt picked up 18 and the first down. And that was a great job of the left side of the punt team blocking for Saeed Holt. We were able to put a hat on a hat, and then you get Saeed Holt in the open field. Anything could happen, and it just did, and he picked up the first down on the fake punt. So the 18-yard pickup for Saeed Holt. He now has 28 yards on the ground, and Woodland Hills has the ball first down and 10 at the Tigers' 22. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. Whitehurst is in the pistol with receivers split to either side. Hand off, Holt bouncing it to the right. Tries to turn the corner, slides forward. He's got the first down as a face, or rather as a flag comes in. It'll be a pickup of about a dozen for Woodland Hills. But uh, will this be a penalty against Deontay Robertson back near the 20 yard line? If so, it's mildly egregious. They're going to say holding against Woodland Hills. Ten yards from the spot. The spot of the foul was uh, the 18-yard line. So to back the Wolverines up to the 28-yard line, where it'll be first down and about 15. And it's good to see that uh, Saeed Holt still has that speed. And we've kind of missed over the last couple of ball games with him not being in there. We call that on Derek Carraway. He had the jersey grab, but he was well on the inside. Usually the officials will let that one slide. Whitehurst to the air, looking to the right. Down that far sideline, looking for Deontay Robertson. The pass is incomplete. And uh, I think had the pass been a little bit closer to being in bounds, the Wolverines may have had a case there for pass interference. Well, it I don't understand why Mike Whitehurst is throwing into double coverage. I mean, even though the one defensive back was trailing, he certainly had, was the over-the-top safety help. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It looked like he might have pushed off. Uh, it looked like Glover might have pushed off if that ball was catchable. Four straight incompletions for Whitehurst after throwing two straight completions. Hand off, Holt running to the left-hand side on second and 15. Pauses around the 25, trying to reverse his field, and he will drag a couple of Tigers with him inside of the 25 to around the 23. You'll credit the tackle to Sean Heitla. Heitla also got to go for the ride on the back of Seed Holt there. And again, Saeed Holt taking the ball off the left side. And personally, I think he just needs to go to the left side and keep going. Um, don't worry about trying to cut back because the, the Moon Tigers are a lot faster than, you know, this Wilton Hills offense is anticipated and, you know, it's showing in the scoreboard. Clock winds 3.05 in the third quarter. Wilton Hills down 10. Trips right. One receiver to the near side left on third and 11. 
Whitehurst pass intended for Robinson. Oh, nearly intercepted, and there was nothing but greenery in front of Ray Quinn Glover. And we've seen drops by Glover tonight, but none more important for the Wolverines than that one. Yeah, that would, I think, clinch the ball game for the Moon Tigers. And again, Mikey Whitehurst keeps overthrowing these wide receivers every single time. So fourth down and 11, and Chucky Hanchett's going to come on to attempt what appears to be a 40-yard field goal from the left hash. This is important points for Woody Hine. Callister, the snapper, the holder is Whitehurst. Hanchett gets the kick up. And that field goal by Chucky Hanchett is good. And with 2.48 to play in the third quarter, the Wolverines get some points on the board. It's 17 to 10, Moon over Woodland Hills. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Forty-yard field goal by Chucky Hanchett, and the Wolverines lead, or rather, trail the Moon Tigers by seven points, 17 to 10. Big defensive stand necessary here for the Wolverines, Fred Guy. Yeah, and, and really, the Woodland Hills defense so far in the second half has played really well. Uh, you know, Moon has had the ball uh, in Wolverine territory a couple times in the second half, but each time Woodland Hills has been able to come away with a, either a turnover on downs or some sort of stop. Follow the Woodland Hills Football Network on Facebook, facebook.com slash Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills going with a surprise on side. The ball carrying, carrying off of an up man right around the 50-yard line for the Tigers. But uh, covering it up smartly was Ben Roma. And Roma covers that one up, and the Tigers are in business at the midfield strike. I don't know how much of a surprise that was, Adam, considering that uh, Ch Chucky Hanchick took a roundabout way to, uh, to kicking that ball off. Yeah, the Wolverines didn't set in an obvious onside kick formation, and I think the Wolverines were trying to surprise the Tigers, but that round off that uh, Hanchick used to approach the football, I think, tipped the Wolverines' hand, as you said. 2.47 to play, ball at the 50-yard line. Screen being set up by the Tigers, and a nice job by Barlow there to read the screen, retreat, and bring down the receiver after just a six-yard game. Tyrell Barlow saved what would have assuredly been a first down, if not a touchdown, for the Tigers. Yeah, did a great job of peeling off right away once he saw that he was getting uh, more, more than normal penetration on the quarterback, peeled off and made a nice ankle tackle. Second catch for the tight end, Nick Bonner. Bonner now has two catches for 16 yards. Pass to the far side, and uh, it is caught by Anthony Panucci, and then Panucci just pays the price. He's hit hard by Derek Carraway. Well, Adam, that's all well and good. It's just depending on where the spot is. I was hoping they didn't pick up the first down, but Derek Carraway did a great job of seeing it and just coming straight up and putting his helmet right in the chest of the Tiger receiver. Gain of three, and it's third down and one for Moon. With the football at the Woodland Hills 41-yard line. Shotgun formation on each go. The trips to the right and two receivers to the left-hand side and Woodland Hills is going to use a timeout. 127 to play in the third frame. It's Moon 17, Woodland Hills 10. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Check out the Woodland Hills Football Network Facebook page, or rather their uh, website, woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com. Coverage of the Wolverines all year, and uh, right now it is a third down and one for the Moon Tigers with the ball at the 41-yard line, trips to the right of the formation. As uh, they set up the Wildcat, and Panucci comes in there. He picks up the first down before being tossed to the boundary, and they're going to throw a flag for making a tackle. I cannot believe this one, Fred. Uh, it's a pickup of two there by... Panucci. And uh, they're going to say it's against the Tigers. They're going to wave it off. Okay, that's reasonable. Of course they would. 
I mean, if it's against Woodland Hills and they wave it off, I think that's reasonable. And I think that's what happened. I think an, an official that was nine miles away from the play, kind of like what we saw last week against North Hills, made an egregious call. This time, the crew came in and was able to talk that official out of it. Uh, I think they were trying to get a siege page Jones for the hit out of bounds, but he fell down right before, right after uh, Panucci fell to the turf. He's good looking to the left, throwing to the left. The pass is complete, and a pair of Wolverines combined to make the tackle over there on that far side, making the catch is Josh Burns, and Burns has had a whale of a football game catching the football for the Tigers. He's now over 100 yards, receiving 102 by my count. And Kaniska does a great job of really just getting the ball from center, takes two steps back, doesn't let the Wolverine defensive line get any penetration before he can uh, toss the ball away. Nine catches, 102 yards, 102 of the 152 yards passing thus far for Moon. Kanichka sets in the shotgun, trips to the short side left, now ball motion, the wing from left to right. Looking left, Kanichka completes the pass to Panucci, and he'll be tossed out of bounds on that far sideline. Derek Carraway on the tackle for Woodland Hills. Panucci with a one-yard gain, and it is third down and about three. And the Tigers, I do believe, are going to uh, be satisfied going to the fourth quarter, holding a seven-point lead on Woodland Hills. And as they should. They've done a great job so far in this ball game of really keeping the offense uh, offense for Woodland Hills in check. And then defensively, you know, I'm sorry, offensively they're doing a great job against this Wolverine defense, and then defensively they've been really holding the Wolverine offense in check for pretty much this entire ball game. Again, it's 17 to 10, Moon leading Woodland Hills. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers, IMSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. At the begin quarter number four, as Moon leads Woodland Hills 17 to 10. The Tigers have the ball third down and three at the Woodland Hills 32 yard line. Wolverine D needs a stop here as there's an empty set for Kanichka. Twins to the left, two receivers, rather three to the right hand side. It'll be a first down for the Tigers as they find Ray Quinn Glover, and Ray Quinn Glover will carry the ball inside of the 20 to the 17 yard line. Again, another quick pass out to the flats for Moon, and it looks like Glover may be down on the turf after that play. 15 yard pickup on that play as Glover is. Slow to get to his feet and hobbles as he comes to the near sideline. Third catch of the game for Glover for 28 yards. But the ultra-efficient Cole Kanichka today has thrown for 168 yards. And he has thrown just six incompletions by my account, maybe seven. Didn't even take a drop. It didn't even take a step back. He took the ball from the center and then whipped it right out to Glover. And Glover took it to the outside, picking up the first down and much more. Trips left, one receiver to the right, sidecar to the right-hand side of the quarterback. Kanichka looking left this time. Throwing left, pass complete to Panucci. He was wide open, and into the end zone he will go for a 17-yard touchdown. And I think that was an absolute miscommunication uh, by the Wolverine secondary. Didn't really see him coming out, but Kanichka saw him standing wide open amongst three or four Woodland Hills Wolverines, and then caught the ball and dove over the Goal line for the touchdown. 17-yard touchdown, and the Wolverines are down by 13 points. The PAT upcoming, it could be 14, and the Wolverines are in trouble, Fred. Good snap, good hold, kick up by Morrow. That kick good with 11.22 to play in the fourth quarter. The Moon Tigers shocking the Woodland Hills Wolverines 24-10. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. The stun sideline on the far side while a joyous Moon Tiger team along the near boundary as they lead the Woodland Hills Wolverines 24 to 10. Cole Kanichka finding Anthony Panucci with a 17 yard touchdown, the PAT by Morrow and the Wolverines down by double digits. Yet again.
Kick down to the 12-yard line where it'll be returned by Derek Carraway who burst free around the 30-yard line. He'll cross the 40 and an ankle tackle around the 43-yard line. But a tackle to Logan Young and the freshman making a big play for Moon. Yeah, actually a touchdown saving play uh, for Moon because Derek Carraway had a full head of steam as he crossed the 40-yard line. And uh, again, I think that... See, I couldn't see the number of the, the person that made the tackle. Two receivers split to either side. Daniel Jones is the quarterback to start the fourth quarter. SC hold is the tailback. Low snap. Jones able to corral it. Throws to the left hand side. Two Wolverines were open, but instead Daniel Jones threw it uh, in the midst of two red jerseys. Neither Tiger could hang on to it. And uh, the incomplete pass will bring up second and ten, but there's a flag in the backfield. And it is roughing the passer against the Tigers, and the Wolverines will be the beneficiary of another 15-yard penalty against the host team. Yeah, and they really need to take advantage of it because, you know, Moon really hasn't given Woodland Hills too much by way of penalty yards so far in this ball game, from the defensive side, I should say. First and 10 for Woodland Hills, the ball at the Moon 42-yard line. Jones in the pistol. Pressured, rolling to his left as he eludes pressure. Throwing down that far boundary, it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to be deflected, and it's going to fall to the turf. Incomplete. Deontay Robertson initially turned into a D-back to try to take the ball away from a Tiger and then had an opportunity to come down the turf with the football, but the incomplete pass just brings up second and ten. Yeah, I don't think Willen Hill saw number 34 coming off the edge. Uh, Austin McConaughey uh, just did a... Daniel Jones did a great job of eluding the rush and keeping his eyes downfield trying to hit Deontay Robinson. Second and ten. Trips to the right of the formation for the Wolverines. One receiver to the far side left. Mr. Formation. As Jones sets up the screen. It's complete. Seed Holt. He's got the first down. He's got a convoy in front of him. He's inside of the 25 to the 20. Out of bounds to the far boundary around the 17. It's a big pickup for the Wolverines. And that's a great job of Saeed Holt of really being patient after he got the screen pass, picking up some blockers and then following his blockers down the field. 26 yard completion on that screen pass to Seed Holt and the Wolverines in business in the Tigers red zone. Eddie yards on three completions thus far for Daniel Jones today. Wins to either side as Jones sets in the pistol and Jaquan Smith dots that pistol. Wolverines stack the receivers. Low snap. Jones running left. He's going to step forward. He's going to cross the 10. Absorbs contact around the seven yard line. It'll be a pickup of about nine. And Fred, I'll tell you what, if you're a D back running up on Daniel Jones, you may want to think twice. Yeah, he's listed at 220 pounds, 5'11, 220 pounds. And, and he's a load. I mean, if he gets moving, get a, gets a full head of steam, he's gonna he's gonna it's gonna leave a mark, and you're definitely gonna fill it on Saturday morning. Nine-yard pickup on that one, and it's second down and one. Corey Fisher, I think, got the worst of that collision with Daniel Jones on that far boundary. So again, second and one for Woodland Hills. The football at the seven. Trips to the right. Jones is going to hand off to Jaquan Smith, who's going to run straight up the gut and cross the goal line for a Woodland Hills touchdown. Hey, Jaquan Smith is starting to become a, a touchdown machine. Anytime he touches the ball, it seems to go into the end zone. Seen a lot of it earlier on in the season. And again, just taking the ball right up the middle of the field and right through the heart of the Moon Tiger defense. Well, it's a one possession game now with Woodland Hills trailing by eight points. Chucky Hanchin can make it seven with this PAT. McAllister, the snapper, good hold by 
Whitehurst, and the PAT is good, and a flag comes in. And if the Tigers are offside, I do believe the Woodland Hills Wolverines will just decline this one. They're going to say it's a uh, formational penalty or a false start against Woodland Hills, and uh, Woodland Hills is going to have to kick again, Freddie. And I don't think they know that yet because it looks like they're huddled up for the kickoff. Wolverines will be forced to retry the PAT. And instead of from the three, it will be from the eight where the ball will be snapped. And this will be about a 25-yard PAT. The ball finally set at the eight-yard line. And again, Hanchett will attempt PAT this time uh, about uh, 26 yards as they'll set the ball at the 16 middle of the field can holder Whitehurst out of the snap of McAllister those two parts work well and Hanchett's PAT is good again and with 10:39 to play in the fourth quarter it is 24 to 7 moon leading Woodland Hills you're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network Back at Moon Stadium where Woodland Hills has cut the Moon Tigers lead down to seven points, 24 to seven. On a seven yard touchdown run straight up the gut went Jaquan Smith for the Woody High TD. And Fred, the Woodland Hills defense needs to come up big here. A quick, quick stop. Don't let the Tigers get too much going. Yeah, I think a turnover would be more beneficial. Uh, but again, I think Coach, no, coaches, the, the coaches for Woodland Hills need to simplify the defense and not do this onside kick right now. Yeah, that uh, onside kick of uh, nine yards, and the Tigers again were anticipating it and stepping forward and catching the ball on the fly. The sophomore Sean Brennan and the Tigers will start this drive at the Woodland Hills 49. 49 yards from uh, making it yet again a two possession game. Again, simplify the defense, run man-to-man -man coverage, and try to get some pressure on the quarterback. That's one thing they haven't been able to do all game long. Uh, Moon quarterbacks have been able just to basically sit back there and pick apart the defense. Paul Konichka is the traditional QB. They've also run the Wildcat with Panucci back there at the tail. This is Konichka. This time as the quarterback, he was looking to pass. His flags came in, and I think the Tigers were guilty of moving early. That's going to cost them five yards, and the ball will be pushed back into Tiger territory to the 46. So first and 15 for Moon with the ball at the Moon 46-yard line, 10.37 to play in the fourth quarter. The Tigers break the huddle with trips to the left, one receiver right. Sidecar to the right-hand side of Konichka as he sends a man in motion in Glover. Straight drop back. Konichka looking across the middle, and the pass intended for the tight end. Nick Bonner, he couldn't hang on to it there, and the incomplete pass brings up second down and 10. And that time, Woolen Hills did a great job of, uh, with, with they're still in the zone, it looked like, and did a great job of really fanning out and uh, being accountable for every receiver coming out of the back, or coming out into the formation. Second down and 15 for Moon. Two receivers left. One receiver to the far side right. Konichka in the shotgun high snap. Looking left the whole way. Throwing left. And somehow the uh, receiver got behind the Woodland Hills defensive back. Nick Sebastian was able to adjust to the football better than the Woody High DB on the near boundary. And I think that Nazir Taylor just basically overran the play initially. Now I think he was trying to go for the interception. And what happens when he jumped, he mistimed his jump, 
and Sebastian was the beneficiary of that because it landed right in his bread basket. And that's kind of what I meant by he overran the play, overrunning it as far as overrunning the football to the near boundary, and that allows the Tigers to pick up 34 yards, and it's first and 10 for Moon at the 20-yard line. Straight drop back, Kanichka sets up the screen. Completes the pass, sliding through tacklers goes Brady Sunday, and Brady Sunday will pick up a moon first down, a pickup of 13 yards. Again, I think Willen Hills is trying to tackle the football instead of tackling the man. It, you have to tackle the ball carrier. I mean, you don't bank on a, a fumble or them fumbling because they've been pretty short-handed most of this game for the, for the Moon Tigers. So that pickup of 13, and the Tigers in business first and goal at the Woodland Hills 7. Kanichka in the shotgun, side guard to his right, trips left, and a flag comes in. And the Tigers are guilty of a delay of game. And that'll back Moon up five yards back to the 12-yard line. Well, the good news, Adam, there wasn't a discussion about it. Picking up on your sarcasm. Just a little bit. 215 yards in the air today for Cole Konechka, and he has done it terribly efficiently. That 34-yard pass by far was the longest of the day for Moon. Kanichka looking right the whole way, has a receiver wide open in the end zone. And uh, Nick Sebastian couldn't hold on to the football. Cole Kanichka overthrew him. But how was Sebastian that wide open, Fred? I was trying, I'm trying to see where he came from. And it was just a crossing route. And a C. Page Jones took the underneath, and he had nobody over top to help him out. And luckily for Woolen Hills, Kanichka overthrew the receiver. Again, Fred, looking forward to next week. The Wolverines take on the uh, West Allegheny Indians. And, you know, you and I, we can look forward as broadcasters. And fans, they can look forward. But I think that coming into today, the Wolverines may have been looking forward after a very exciting win against a tough conference opponent last week in the North Hills Indians. They came out to Moon to take on a team that they really felt that they were uh, favored against. And uh, they are struggling today. And that makes the game against West Allegheny even that much more important should Woodland Hills not able, not be able to overcome the seven-point deficit. Yeah, I mean they're gonna. I mean if they want to win the conference championship, if they lose this game, they're gonna have to win next week against North, or West Allegheny, and then uh, the week after against Upper St. Clair. Now they do that in Upper and whether uh, West Allegheny wins their next. Uh, they win today and they win uh, the final game of the season. Woodland Hills will have a share of that conference title with West Day, but Woodland Hills would hold the tiebreaker and the better seed heading into the playoffs because uh, they would have the win against the Indians. That's exactly correct. And you know, the one thing I'm thinking about with this Moon Tiger game, the atmosphere of this game, you have a, you know, again, a top two team in the Whippeal uh, coming into your house. It's senior night. Um, you know, a lot of these guys are playing in their last home game of their career. So obviously they're going to come out and give you their best game. And I don't think Woodland Hills was expecting that. We will see what the Wolverines can do here. Their defense needs to buckle down on second down and goal from the 12-yard line. Raquin Glover very gingerly helped to the near boundary. I hate to see that. Two receivers right, one to the near side left. Kanichka in the shotgun. Looks to the left, throws to the left. The pass intended for Josh Burns is incomplete, and Burns was open, but the pass was off the mark for the second time in a row. And again, I think this deep in this deep in Wolverine territory, you really need to step up against these wide receivers. Play man-to-man -man coverage, forget the zone, put your best athletes on their best athletes and see what happens. Third and goal at the 12 for the Moon Tigers. Nine minutes, 10 seconds remain in regulation. Trips right, one receiver left. Kanichka, shotgun, looking right, and the pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. Deontay Robertson came on the blitz and knocked the ball to the turf. 
And this puts and this puts Moon in, in a pretty interesting position. They have a really solid kicker in Morrow who has put a field goal on the board, not to mention three extra points. So I think that's what they're going to do right now. And this will be 29-yard field goal attempt. Ball towards the left, and uh, Ruben Hills is going to use a timeout here to talk about the possible attempt at blocking this field goal. That will give us an opportunity to take a breather, too. 9.08 to play in regulation. Woodland Hills down seven, but the Tigers look to make it 10 with a field goal unit on the field when we return. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Moon looks to build on a seven point lead with a 29 yard field goal attempt. Morrow, his field goal is good. And the Wolverines are down by 10 again. With 9.06 to play, it's Moon 27 and Woodland Hills 17. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Adam Gusky and Fred Guy in the West Hills of Pittsburgh as the Moon Tigers right now shocking the Woodland Hills Wolverines by 10 points. 27 to 17. Moon has led by as many as 14. Woodland Hills hold, held a four point lead early in the game. Bouncing kickoff into the awaiting arms of Seed Holt as he runs from right to left. Lost his footing around the 30-yard line. Some flags fly in as he crosses the 30 towards the 31-yard line as the officials uh, work this out. The Wolverines will bring the offense to the field. Penalty is holding against the Wolverines, and that'll back them up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. The spot of the foul was the 28-yard line, so the Wolverine drive will start at the 18. I couldn't see who the holding call was on, unless they were calling it on Holloway, number 27, who really wasn't even engaged with a blocker when Holt got to him. So I'm not exactly sure why that was called. First and 10 for Woodland Hills. The ball at their own 18 yard line. Tigers leading the Wolverines by 10 right now, 27 to 17 with just under nine minutes to play in regulation. Wolverines stack to receivers to either side. Tailback behind Daniel Jones. Jones in the pistol down the near boundary looking for Robertson. Robertson leaps up, makes the catch on the near boundary. It's first and 10 for Woodland Hills, just shy of the midfield strike. Great job by Robinson of one, staying inbounds, two, just high pointing that ball, getting that ball at its highest point as it got to him and, and making a spectacular catch. 31 yard completion as Jones finds Robertson there. And Jones now eclipses 100 yards in the air on just four completions. Robertson, his first catch of the game. He had a big one last week as well. Jones in the pistol. Looking left, throwing left. Complete. Derek Carraway has it. He's got the first down at the 40 yard line. He'll be wrestled down after a pickup of a dozen. And that was a great catch by Carraway. It was a little bit high, but he was able to go up and get it. And unfortunately, it looks like Carraway might be battling a little bit of a cramp issue right now. And that pickup of 12. He now has uh, seven yards on two catches, does Derek Carraway, because he had a catch for minus five yards earlier on in this football game. Jones 5 of 7 thus far for 123. And, uh, Fred, as you said, Derek Carraway looks like he caught a cramp there. And, uh, you know, that's not a term that's uh, used often, but uh, catching a cramp is exactly what happened there, basically because as he was brought down, his uh, calf muscle over flexed and uh, basically, as I said, caught the cramp. So it'll be first down and 10 for Woodland Hills. The ball at the Moon 39-yard line. We saw the Wolverines strike quickly on their last possession. The problem is they allowed the Tigers to strike back with a field goal to take the lead back to double digits. Yeah, and, and 
Moon did it just matriculating the ball down the field. They, I mean, they had some nice passes. Uh, again, both quarterbacks for Moon has done, have done a great job of, of putting the ball in the air, finding receivers. And, and again, you know, situations like that where you have a, a solid kicker, you can't let them, you can't, the, the Woodland Hills defense can't let the offense get anywhere around the 25, 30 yard line or Moon's gonna still put some points on the board. Take a look at the Big East Conference. The other side of uh, 5A, McKeesport atop the Big East Conference with a record of 5-1. and one. Armstrong and Gateway, as well as Kiske, are 4-1 and one within conference play. The surprise really is that Penn Trafford has lost two straight conference games to Gateway and Franklin. Uh, and the aforementioned Franklin Regional Panthers are in fifth right now in the Big East Conference at 4-2. and two. Connellsville Falcons, Latrobe Wildcats, and Plum Mustangs have all yet to win a game within the Big East Conference. That is the other conference in uh, WPIL 5A. Don't forget next week the Wolverines take on the West Allegheny Indians. Kickoff is set for, it was scheduled for seven. The game has been picked up by Root Sports next week. So the kickoff has been pushed back to 7.30 p.m. So we will have the call for you on MSA Sports starting at 7.05. And our television broadcast, including live streaming on YouTube and Facebook, will start at 7.25. And the kickoff again at around 7.30. Talked about how the Wolverines take on West A next Friday night. Two weeks from tonight, the Wolverines take on the Upper St. Clair Panthers. So it's homecoming, then senior night down in Turtle Creek. So uh, if you can't make it down to the Wolverine, which we want you to do, make sure that you can uh, tune in to the Woodland Hills Football Network no matter where you are. Caraway to his feet and walking gingerly to that far sideline. Senior two way back. Trips left, one receiver to the near side right as the Wolverines bring the offense to the field on first down and 10 at the Moon Tigers. 39 yard line, Daniel Jones remains in at quarterback for Woodland Hills as he's completed five of seven attempts for 123 yards. Trips left. Jones looking left. Now he'll step to that left hand side, slides through tacklers. He'll pick up positive yardage, close to the first down marker as he steps out of bounds on that far sideline, and a flag comes in late. And it was a 10 yard gain for Daniel Jones, and if this flag is against the Tigers, the Wolverines will have the ball inside of Moon's 20 yard line. So it is a personal foul against the Moon Tigers. And, uh, personal foul happening inside of the 30-yard line is half the distance to the goal. So the ball will be moved from the 29 to just inside of the 15. So it's first and 10 for Woodland Hills, again, just inside of that 15-yard line. And it looks like Woodland Hills is running a little bit of a no huddle offense. Trips right, one receiver left. Holt takes the handoff straight up the middle, running to the right now. He's inside of the 10, spinning his way forward down to the four yard line. They'll say he's down at the five. It's first and goal for Woodland Hills. So second down and about one for Woodland Hills with the football at the six yard line. Daniel Jones runs to the right and into the end zone for a Woodland Hills touchdown of five and a half yards. And that was just a zone read by Jones. Pulled the ball out of the belly of Saeed Holt. Saw that the defensive end had crashed in and the right side of, of the offense was wide open and uh, took it right in for the touchdown. So a six-yard touchdown run for Daniel Jones, and the Wolverines are within four points right now. They can make it three with this PAT by Chucky Hanchett. A big drive there for the Woodland Hills offense, Fred. And Hanchett's PAT 
is good. Just high enough and just inside of that left upright. It is 27 to 24, Moon leading Woodland Hills, but the Wolverines now within an arm's length. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Back at Moon Stadium where Woodland Hills has cut the Moon Tigers lead down to three points. 27 to 24, Adam Gusky and Fred Guy on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. A six yard touchdown run by Daniel Jones. Cuts the Tigers lead down to three points after Chucky Hanchett kicks the PAT. And Hanchett, this end over end kick, carries to the far boundary and will bounce towards that sideline. The Wolverines nearly had an opportunity to come out of there with it, but couldn't come up with the football. And the flag will come in and the Tigers will start this drive at the 35 yard line. And that's, a, I mean, kind of have a dozen in one hand, six in the other. It, you, you avoid the onside kick, which was have it, hasn't been very successful, but then you go ahead and kick the ball out of bounds. So I don't know which one's worse. I mean, really gaining 15 yards on the out of bounds play, but again, it's still out of bounds. And you're putting uh, moon in the moon offense in a pretty decent, posi decent position for this first play. Tigers with the offense on the field, straight down the middle, and the pass is intercepted by Derek Carraway at the 49-yard line. Carraway running from right to left to the far boundary, inside of the 30, out of bounds around the 20-yard line, and the Wolverines are in business with 7-17 to play in the fourth quarter. Woodland Hills has cut the Tiger lead down to three, and they have an opportunity to take the lead for the first time in a long time. I'm all for celebrating at him, but right now Woodland Hills needs to make sure that they kind of keep it uh, to a minimum because you don't want to get a, you don't want to get a silly penalty after a spectacular play. A nice catch by Derek Carraway, maintaining concentration throughout the entire uh, process and then picking up some nice yardage on the return. So Woodland Hills will start this drive at the 24-yard line. That's where they say Derek Carraway steps out of bounds. Of the Moon Tigers. 7.17 to go. Woodland Hills looking to take advantage of the interception by Derek Carraway as the handoff goes to Seed Holt. He slides through tacklers, drives his way to the 21-yard line, maybe the 22 before being driven back. He'll pick up a modest gain of two, but more importantly, the Wolverines pushing the ball ever closer to seizing the lead back. And again, Willen Hills needs to understand that there is still a lot of time left on this clock to work your way down the field and then put the ball in the end zone. Second down and eight for Woodland Hills with the football at the 21. Jones looking straight down the middle. The pass in and out of the hands of Abram Abramovitz, a D-back for Moon. A D-back for Moon must have gotten a hand on the ball and uh, or at least done enough to throw off the concentration from Abramovitz, and that will bring up third down and eight. And typically Abramovitz is very short-handed. You might be right. I think there was a D-back that came across the face uh, of Abramovich just as that ball was getting to him because it didn't seem like it was overthrown or outside of his reach. Jones looking right this time, and the pass intended for Eric Oliver is incomplete. On the coverage for Moon is Ramon Dean, and that incompletion brings up fourth down and eight. Boy, I'll tell you what, Fred. It's decision time for Woodland Hills. Do they bring the field goal unit on? Try for what would be probably a 50-yard field goal, or rather a 40-yard a field goal, or do you try to get the first down? This is going to be a 39-yard field goal attempt for Chucky Hanchett from the left hash. This is a biggie for sure. Good snap, good hold. Hanchett's kick is no good as it carries to the right. 
And the Wolverines uh, come up empty after the Derek Carraway interception. Again, I'm not exactly sure why there needed to be two passes to the end zone on this drive, considering there's six, there are over six minutes left to go in this game. You have the momentum. You're driving down the field. Keep, keep, just keep working the ball down the field. There's no need to go for the, the, the kill shot right away. And I could see it. Maybe you're going for it on first down, taking advantage of the momentum swing on the interception. Conversely, uh, after that, try to, to pick up first downs. Don't go for that kill shot each and every time. 6.23 to go here. And Moon has the ball back at their own 20. Dodging a bullet. Pass complete to the left-hand side, making the catch as the tight end, Nick Bonner. And then Bonner is wrestled down by a Woodland Hills D-back. Again, Woodland Hills needs to go to, the, to a man-to-man -man zone. There's no way that Bonner, who's been one of their best receivers so far in this ball game, can be that wide open coming out of the back. Pick up of seven on that pass play to the tight end. That is his third catch of the game for 23 yards. Pass to the near side left is complete as quarterback Cole Konichka finds Nick Sebastian on the near boundary and Sebastian shoved out of bounds at the 36 yard line for a pickup of nine and it's another first down. And Konichka did a great job of just finding Sebastian who was wide open in the flats and got enough for the first down. Three catches, 49 yards for Sebastian thus far. Moon Tigers with the ball, first down and 10. As Kanichka, straight drop back. He throws the ball down in towards the feet of Woodland Hills defensive back. There's no eligible receiver within miles of Kanichka, and this is going to be intentional grounding against Moon. That's going to back them up. And it is a loss of down as well. Intentional grounding penalty. Roll back the Tigers up five yards from the spot of the foul. And it will be first down and 10 for Moon with the football at the 27 yard line. First and 10 for the Moon Tigers with the football at their own 27 yard line. 535 to play in the fourth frame. It's Moon 27, Woodland Hills 24. Moon dodging a bullet after an interception by Derek Carraway. Now the pass down the near sideline, and they are able to pick up a big first down on the Moon Tigers as Kanichka again connects with his favorite target, Josh Burns. Burns finally forced out of bounds inside of the Woodland Hills 40 at the 37-yard line. And Moon ran a, a little pump and go to the left side, and uh, Jaquan Smith fell for the pump. And as soon as that... Uh, as soon as Kaniska saw Smith move up, he was able to find Bonner and hit him in stride pretty much, picking up a good first down. Pick up of 36 yards on that pass play. And now Kaniska is pressured and brought down in the backfield. A loss of about three. And it will be second down and 13. And I think that might have been a bad snap from the center to Kaniska, but uh, did a great job of picking it up off the turf and had to, you know, there was, nothing, there was not too much he could do after that. A couple of technical difficulties have knocked us off of MSA Sports a couple of times, so let's uh, try to reset for you a little bit at least. A six-yard touchdown run moments ago by Daniel Jones cut the Moon Tiger lead down to uh, three points. Wolverines were able to pick off the Tigers on the ensuing drive on the first play, but weren't able to do anything with it. They missed a field goal, and now the Tigers are driving as a uh, Tiger catching the ball along the near sideline, steps out of bounds around the 17-yard line, and it will be first and 10 for Moon inside of the Woodland Hills red zone at the 17. And I'll tell you what, Fred, this is not the way the defense wanted to respond after the Wolverine offense. Uh, Grew, grew stale after not being able to take advantage 
of the uh, interception by Derek Carraway. Yeah, and it was, a, it was a great interception and put him in prime territory to put some points on the board. You know, unfortunately, Chucky Hancha couldn't connect on his field goal attempt. But again, you know, the Moon Tiger offense has just worked you know, worked their game plan to perfection against this Wolverine defense. 39-yard field goal was missed by Chucky Hanch. And again, the Tigers starting this drive at their own 20. They now have it at the Woodland Hills 17 after the completion down the near sideline uh, to, again, the favorite target was Josh Burns on that catch for Moon. And it is second down and 10 after the incompletion. You know, the one thing that the Wolverines haven't been able to do defensively is get any pressure on Kamisco. He's just done a great job of taking the ball from center, taking one or two steps, and then just throwing it basically down in the flats. He really hasn't had too many long pass plays, except the one a couple of plays ago to Bonner, which was a pump and go. Trips right, one receiver to the near side left. Kanichka looking left, throwing left. The pass intended for Josh Burns is incomplete, and that'll bring up third down and 10. And, and again, I don't think Moon has any urgency to, to put the ball in the end zone at this point because they have a solid kicker in Morrow who can basically boot the ball pretty much from anywhere on the field. So third and 10 for the Moon Tigers, the football at the 17. Woodland Hills right now down by three. Moon with the football at the Woodland Hills 18-yard line. Looking right, Kanichka finds a cutting Josh Burns, and Burns is banged around and brought down. He'll actually end up retreating and uh, picking up no yards after picking up a couple initially. And it looks like Moon's going to bring the field goal unit back on to extend this lead to six points. I should say, to try to extend this lead to six points. Nick Morrow, 5'10". Now they're six for 222-pound kicker for the Moon Tigers. This will be a 33-yard field goal attempt from the right hash. Good snap. No, they're going for the fake. They're going to dump it over the top, and the pass is incomplete, and the Wolverines are going to be guilty of pass interference. Fred, I think that's the right call. I mean, as a Wolverine fan and as a Wolverine alum, I hate to see it, but it's the right call. Yeah, and Nazir Taylor had a couple of hands to the body of the receiver uh, as that ball got to to his to the receiver's hands, and you know, unfortunately, I mean, it is the right call. Fortunately for the referees, it's the right call. Unfortunately for the Wolverines, there was a pass interference. And you know what, Fred? The biggest issue is I don't think that the tight end makes the catch even without the interference by Nazir Taylor. No, I don't think he does either. I think that was well over the So now the officials are having another conference. Why is it fourth down? And if it's the umpire that made the call, it might. Okay. Why is it fourth down? It's, I guess it's not an automatic. Half the distance? I guess it's, I guess because it's not an. I guess pass interference is an automatic first down. <laughs> I don't know either. All right. I'm confused. Yeah, I am too. Timeout taken by the Moon Tigers. We'll step away too. Uh, 27 to 24, Woodland Hills trails Moon. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. <laughs> All right, well, we got the story during the break. Uh, officials uh, told the coaching staffs who uh, heard on the radio and then told us that it was called defensive holding against the Wolverines. Apparently in high school, that's not an automatic first down. So the 10 yard penalty Gives Moon the ball fourth down at about a yard and a half of the nine. And the Tigers are going to run over to the left-hand side. It looks like Moon had enough to pick up the first down on the initial surge as uh, the ball carrier was Anthony Panucci out of the Wildcat. And 
with Woodland Hills only having one timeout, they really can't afford to stop the clock. Uh, actually, they can only stop it once um, in the next three minutes and a little under 30 seconds. I don't know how that wasn't pass interference. Looking back a couple of plays ago, either way, Moon has the first down with the ball at the seven yard line. And Moon's going to call a timeout. And, uh, that'll give us an opportunity to uh, contemplate uh, what we have seen here thus far tonight. It's 27 to 24, Moon leading Woodland Hills, but the Tigers threaten at the Woodland Hills seven yard line. First and goal when we return. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Tiger straight from the sideline to the line of scrimmage on first and goal. The ball at the Woodland Hills seven yard line. Three point lead for the Moon Tigers. Two receivers to the left. Handoff going to the tailback who drives his way inside of the five and will be brought down around the three yard line. The ball carrier Brady Sunday, his first touch in a very long time. And it looks like uh, the Moon Tigers are going to try to bully the Wolverines on this, this drive to try to just push it in by way of the run to, to kind of really, I think if, if no matter, I think if if Moon scores a touchdown, I think this ball game's over. I, I'd have to concur. I mean, the only way Woodland Hills gets out of here uh, with the opportunity to win this football game is if they force a field goal or take the ball away from Moon at this point. Two receivers right. And the handoff will go to Sunday, who is brought down at the line of scrimmage, and it is third and goal for the Tigers. And the one thing that Moon has to to look at is the fact that, you know, Woodland Hills only has one timeout. They really can't stop the clock, and they, you know, pretty much can do what they want at this point. So Panucci has come back into the game and uh, down to the other end of the press box. The Woodland Hills coaches anticipate the Wildcat, and that is the formation we see as Panucci is set at the quarterback. Trips right. Panucci with a sidecar to his right. He's going to run to his right. He's going to be hemmed in momentarily. Now he'll drive his way to the line of scrimmage and then be driven to the turf. And the Wolverines doing a nice job there after the initial wave was eluded by Panucci. Coming back and making the tackle was DeVega Bird. And I think the Panucci was going to try to run uh, the shovel pass, but I still don't think it was available with the way the pursuit for Woolen Hills uh, was zeroing in on him. Well, Fred, fourth down and goal at the three yard line, and the Moon Tigers do not bring the field goal unit on here. I am absolutely shocked that they're not. <laughs> so trips left. Panucci in the shotgun with the sidecar to his left hand side. He's going to run to his left. He's going to be pressured as he retreats and goes back to his right-hand side. He's going to step forward, and it's going to be intercepted by Woodland Hills in the end zone. It's Derek Carraway. He'll slide his way down at the six-yard line, and the Wolverines are in business. The problem is they're 94 yards away from pay dirt. The good news is they have a minute to cover it. Well, and if, if anybody can cover 94 yards in a minute and one second, it's certainly the Woodland Hills Wolverines. But uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Not so sure that Derek Carraway would have been better served just taking the ball and kneeling right then and there as he got the interception in the end zone. At least they would put him at the 20-yard line. And he was smart enough to slide down as he felt pressure coming around the sixth and not risk turning the ball over. So Woodland Hills will again start this drive at their own. They'll spot the ball at the seven, so 93 yards away from Pato. Jones trips right, looks left, throws left, complete. Avram Abramovic to the 30, to the 40, to the 50, 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, end zone, touchdown, Avram Abramovic. The Wolverines have taken the lead. And there are no flags on the field at all. And this was just a simple seven yard uh, post pattern from Jones to Abramovitz, hit him right in stride. Well, actually, had to climb a ladder a little bit, but then split two defenders, Abramovitz with the speed, and then once he got past number 20, uh, I'm sorry, Josh Burns, he was off to the races, and there was no one stopping. What strength by Avram Abramovitz to break the tackle. 
And uh, there was a flag, Fred, but I do believe that that flag is going to be for uh, some sort of excessive celebration against Woodland Hills. So in no way, shape, or form should that negate the touchdown. And uh, Moon is going to accept the penalty, but uh, it is going to come on the kickoff after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And, uh, you know, Fred, sometimes I, I think those penalties need to go away. Avram Abramovich just caught a 93-yard touchdown pass to take the lead for the first time since the first quarter. Absolutely fantastic play. Great call. And, and sure, they're, they're high school kids. They're going to get excited, and it might, be, it might last a little too long. Well, either way, 93-yard touchdown pass, and the Wolverines hold the lead by three. Chucky Hanchett's PAT makes it four, and with 49.1 seconds to play, the Wolverines have their first lead in a very long time over the Moon Tigers. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Ninety-three yard touchdown pass from Daniel Jones to Avram Abramovitz and the Woodland Hills Wolverines lead the Moon Tigers 31 to 27. And Abramovitz catching that ball around the 20 yard line, split two defenders, and then was able to wrestle his way away from Josh Burns, and then he just took it to the house. Now there is a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct, the Wolverines flag for excessive celebration after. Uh, the touchdown, and now it wasn't after the touchdown, it was actually technically during the touchdown. Um, but the Wolverines uh, were able to kick the PAT, hold the four point lead. Now the kickoff unit is on for the Wolverines, but they are backed up in a hole, kicking from their own 25. And Moon has some burners back there right now. Panucci, uh, Glover, and Burns all back there for Moon. Return will start at the 36-yard line as the uh, kick returner comes to the near sideline and will be wrestled down. The Wolverines were able to come up there and make the stop quickly. Sidney Summers in on the tackle, also in on the stop is Jaquan Smith. And right now, Woolen Hills needs to go to prevent. But uh, let's put it this way. Moon has, has the offense to get the ball down the field in these 42 seconds, considering they've run a lot of out passes, uh, five yard outs, 10 yard outs, and they can stop the clock, and they still also have a couple, one, at least one timeout left. 42.7 seconds to play. Moon with the ball at their own 45. Pass to the near sideline is complete on the catch. Josh Burns, he'll step out of bounds. One yard shy of the first down flag. It's a pickup of nine, and it is second down and one. I don't know if I'm gonna give him that much cushion um, looks like he's looks like uh, Jaquan Smith maybe 10, 15 yards downfield, which isn't going to help the Woodland Hills defense considering the timeouts. And they, again, Moon runs a lot of sideline routes, so they can stop the clock at any time. Kadichka all alone back there. Looks to the left-hand side. The pass is complete to Panucci. He will step out of bounds inside of the 40 at the 39-yard line as the Tigers continue to push the ball into Woodland Hills territory. And they're going to keep running this until Woodland Hills makes an adjustment. They're going to keep running sideline routes uh, and stopping the clock, picking up 5, 10, you know, 10 yards a clip until either one, Woodland Hills makes an adjustment and stops it, or two, the clock runs out, or three, they, they end up in the end zone. Kanichka with that pass completion now eclipses 300 yards on the game. Kanichka looking left and diving and nearly catching the football on the interception was Jaquan Smith. Smith a week ago with a huge INT, nearly had another one there. Yeah. Nice, good instincts by Jaquan Smith of really reading the play and then watching the quarterback, and man, almost sealing the game with an interception. A couple of big interceptions today for Derek Carraway, and those would have been eclipsed by that one had Smith come out of there with it, but instead it's an innocuous incomplete pass, and uh, the Tigers still have life on third and 10. Oh, big left-hand swat there by Michael McAllister, the defensive end, swatting the ball to the turf, and the incomplete pass brings up third down. And that's exactly what the Willen Hills defense needed. One of those guys up front to make to, to really read the play, get their hands up, and bat a ball to the turf. Third and 10 for Moon. The ball at the Woodland Hills, 39-yard line. Oh, 
Tigers breaking the huddle. They'll send three receivers to the wide side right, two to the near short side left. Cole Kanichka all by himself in the shotgun. Kanichka looking left the whole way, pressured, wrapped, and he will be sacked or will they say brought down? Or will they say an incomplete pass? Let's see what the official calls. Now they're gonna say an incomplete pass. It only took the officials 15 seconds to make a decision. And again, Fred, near the end of the game, we see Austin Balashak pressuring the quarterback and making him do funny things. We saw that a week ago against North Hills. Um, his knee was down. I, I'm just looking at the replay. It looked like his knee was down before he threw the ball. So I'm not exactly sure how they can get away with that being an incomplete pass. Well, the incomplete pass gives the Tigers the ball. Fourth down and 10 at the 39-yard line. Moon will send trips to the short side left. One receiver to the far side right. Kanichka steps up. He's pressured by McAllister. He'll throw the pass incomplete. And the Woodland Hills Wolverines will take the ball away on downs. Great job of, of McAllister of really getting some pressure on Kanichka Did it, and, and then forcing the incomplete pass on fourth down. Boy, Michael McAllister in this drive just absolutely was blowing past offensive linemen. Lineman, he was a man possessed. He and Austin Balashek were doing everything they could to disrupt QB Cole Kanichka, and they did it there. And, and, and to be honest with you, the, the defensive line for Woodland Hills hadn't had a great game up until that point, but man, they really came on on those uh, final two out of three plays. 15 seconds to go. Woodland Hills with the ball in the victory formation. Nice snap by McAllister, the kneel down by Daniel Jones. And the Woodland Hills Wolverines overcome multiple double-digit deficits and defeat the Moon Tigers 31-27 to to remain undefeated within Allegheny 9 conference play. Man, Woodland Hills really did escape with one tonight. I mean, again, a great job by, by the Moon Tigers. They, they gave Woodland Hills all they could handle. Woodland Hills stepped up. They really stepped up in the final... Uh, two minutes of this ball game, you know, one with the turnover on downs, uh, and then again the 97 yard, 93 yard uh, touchdown catch and run by Abramovitz. Man, that was amazing. Fred, two weeks in a row, we see Daniel Jones come into the game with late game heroics at the quarterback spot. Today he rushed for a touchdown. He threw a huge touchdown pass last week. He had that big pass to set up the Wolverines' final touchdown. Daniel Jones is really working himself into a pivotal, pivotal role at the Woodland Hills quarterback spot. Yeah, again, he, when he gets back there, he just sets his feet and rocks. He doesn't wait for too much, you know, waits for some things to develop, but then really finds a, a wide receiver that's open and just trusts his instinct and his ability to get the ball down the field. Again, your final score, Woodland Hills defeating the Moon Tigers by a score of 31 to 27. Next Friday night, the Woodland Hills Wolverines will take on the West Allegheny Indians. Kickoff is scheduled for 7.30. Our broadcast on MSA Sports will start at 7.05. Our Facebook broadcast will start at 7.25. And of course, we will have the coverage for you all across the Woodland Hills Football Network. A great game for the Wolverines tonight as they defeat the Moon Tigers by four points. For Fred Guy, I'm Adam Gusky. Folks on the TV side, we'll talk to you again next week. If you're tuned in on MSA Sports, stay tuned for the State Senator Jay Costa Post Game Show. You've been tuned in to the Wolverines and the Tigers on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network.